Huye Mores Bonani Molweni. Good morning, everyone. Dumelang Bahaitu Molweni San Bonani. Huye Mores. You're not mooring, okay. <laughs> All protocol observed. It is nine o'clock on the dot. May I just ask us to stand up wherever we are. Let us observe a moment of silence for all those that we have lost due to COVID. May we all stand please. May I ask each and every one of you to observe a moment of silence. Let us observe a moment of silence and those at home also, thank you. Thank you very much. Once again, a very good morning from me. My name is Mangaliso Malachi. I am from the National School of Government. I would like to welcome each and every one of you. Welcome to the minister. I'm not sure if she is here today. Welcome to the senior management of the NSG and welcome to the colleagues who are joining us via Zoom. This is day two of our PSTF conference. And I would also like to thank Dr. Maja for steering the ship yesterday. We were, we were mellow. We made sure that everything ran according to the program. He started on time. As you know that he is very meticulous about time. So he is the timekeeper today. He will be reminding me if I go over time. So Ms. Dr. Maja, thank you very much for running the program yesterday. Thank you. Today we are having about two or three speakers. It is going to be a slightly different program. We are going on a motorbike today. So fasten up your seatbelt and make sure that you are ready for the ride. It is going to be a different one. Ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to be here. I hope you are all happy to be here. Life is not to be taken for granted. COVID has shown us what is important in our lives, who is important. And the most important thing is life. For without life, we cannot do any of the things that we are doing. Without good health, you and I cannot be standing here and exchanging ideas. So we need to be thankful for life. Life is precious and can be taken away from us at any time. So if there's anything that you haven't heard over the past 24 hours, I hope at least you will hear this one message, a reminder that life is the most important thing that is happening to you right now. And if you are not sure if you are alive, you just take your right hand and put it over your heart. When you feel that beat, then you know that you are alive. If you are still not convinced, you take the hand, you pinch your nose and see if you can breathe. Then that way you will know that you are alive. So what I'm saying to you is, let us be thankful for the life that we have. It is precious, it is a gift and let us use it wisely. So today we are going to recap on what we did uh, yesterday. Like I said, Dr. Maja took us through that mellow, you know, when you go downstream, it is very mellow. You don't rush, you enjoy the ride. But today it's going to be a very fast paced ride. We're going on a how train. We, we are going on a motorbike. So so that you don't fall off. Um, Yesterday, we, we had a couple of people who spoke to us, but the key address was from our minister herself. She reminded us about the most important things for us as public servants. She spoke to us about a capable, ethical, and developmental state as a foremost priority. So if you didn't know what our priority is as public servants, the minister 
put it to us and reminded us that we need to be a capable, ethical, and developmental state. Building state capacity is the most important step towards achieving a developmental state. We cannot achieve a developmental state without having ethical and capacitated public servants. And that role is yours and I to fulfill. The trainers that are here today, that is your role to ensure that we have an ethical and capable public service. She reminded us about the NSG mandate that has been expanded to include the ETD interventions in the three spheres of government, including our state-owned entities and other organs of state. She said we need to focus on building capacity to deliver ETD interventions using knowledgeable and experienced trainers. That is you who are all sitting here who have been exposed to the art of facilitation. And we need to thank the EU for giving us the pairs to ensure that we get all of you in here, that you can be exposed to the art of facilitation. So we thank the EU for that. Most of all, she mentioned what the president said in the State of the Nation Address for 2021. I quote, the public service is at the cold face of government and lack of professionalism doesn't just impact service delivery, it dents the public confidence because the public depends on you and I to be able to deliver the service that we are mandated to deliver. And it is for you as a trainer to capacitate other public servants on how to deliver that service in a professional and ethical way. She also spoke about the impact of COVID-19. We were all impacted by COVID-19. Or is there someone who was not impacted? Was there a lucky person who was never impacted by COVID? We were all impacted by COVID-19 one way or the other. The impact on the NSG necessitated a pedagogical shift to increase the delivery of ETD interventions on digital platforms. We all had to learn. We had to learn how to use Zoom. Chairperson, can you hear me? Am I audible? Can you see me? Remember in the first few days of Zoom? No one was an expert of Zoom. Or maybe Dr. Maja, were you an expert of Zoom? He was born an expert. But we all had to learn. And that was necessitated by the impact of COVID-19. Because if COVID wasn't there, we would still be business as usual, face-to-face -face contact sessions. Then she indicated that the shift in the pedagogical uh, uh, um, state is because we require also facilitators who are agile, people who can think on their feet, who are technologically savvy to navigate the ETD delivery in virtual spaces comfortably. You need to know how to operate the virtual, virtual space because you have a class that you are running. She spoke about that we need to reimagine new ways of, normal, of normal, normality in all spheres of our lives, including learning, teaching, and development and environments. It cannot be business as usual. Things needed to change for us to continue delivering of our mandate. When she concluded, she said that the public sector must master execution diligence and statecraft through targeted interventions such as these ones. So this is not the only one and it should not be the last one. We need to have more of this so that we can recapacitate our trainers. She even gave an example. She said she would like to see a day where we say, I'm going to Paraguana Hospital instead of Centin Clinic. I am going to drink water from the tap, rent water, instead of Valpre. And all those depend on you and I as public servants. Then from the minister, we went on a road trip. We went to the sea, Dr. Sal Muthayan. She even took us back to the days when we were in primary school. You had to sit and meditate 
I was watching you. Some of you were busy in their bags while you were supposed to be meditating. But others went along on that road trip and they ended up sleeping as well. So what Dr. Sal was trying to do was to teach us about the art of facilitation, to take us on a different way of facilitating class. Cannot be business as usual. There must be new ways that are coming out that we are coming up with. She spoke about curriculum. She spoke about class facilitation. The most important thing that she mentioned, she said, you need to know about the people that you are facilitating to. Before you into your class, you need to find out who are the people that you're facilitating to. Before you start, you need to connect with those people and understand who they are. She said the way of presenting, it needs to be fun. It needs to be interesting. It needs to be interactive. It must not be boring. It must not put you to sleep. She spoke about indigenous ways of sharing knowledge, storytelling. Those of you who grew in families where you had a gogo or a mulu, you were always listening to stories before you go to bed. Or you had a parent who was reading you a story. So those are the indigenous ways of sharing knowledge. She played a video of being an African and it woke everybody up. There was that debate that happened because of the video that she played. And she reminded us that as facilitators, we need to be empathetic. We need to embrace diversity. But most of all, we need to leave the Batubeli principles. Those eight principles, they should not just be a chart on the wall. They must be in our heads and in our hearts. She spoke about the new, the know, the be. You know, you know, you be, and you do. That is what we were taught yesterday. But remember, leave the Batupele principles. Then after lunch, we had Miss um, Kulsam Field and Dr. Maretha Duval, who spoke to us about the digital classroom. Zoom, she spoke about Teams. They spoke to us about conducting a class online. Most of us sitting here, if it wasn't of COVID, we wouldn't have had you know, that need to conduct a class online because we enjoyed that physical interaction with our learners. But they showed us a different way of how to conduct a digital classroom and they gave us pointers. Dr. Duval spoke about asynchronous and synchronous training. You know, asynchronous, you do it at your own time, own, own, own place, at your own pace. But synchronous, that is what we are doing here, real time. I am here with you. We are face to face. We have those who are joining us virtually. That is synchronous training. And she said to us, don't be overwhelmed by technology. Focus on your participants. I don't know how true that is. She said, don't be overwhelmed by technology focus on your participants. She spoke to us about collaboration learning, flipped classroom approach, increased learner control, the choice and the independence of a learner. Most important thing that she mentioned, psychological safety in the virtual classroom. I didn't know that. I never knew that. That was something that I learned out of the presentation by Dr. Duval. Most of all, she said, we need to embrace diversity, plan and achieve inclusivity, even in our virtual classes. We need not take that for granted. So that was the recap of what we did yesterday. When um, I introduce the next speaker, there will be a lot of interaction that will be happening and you will be allowed as well to add onto what has happened yesterday. Lastly, before I introduce our speaker for the day, we were all impacted by COVID-19. The NSG was not spared by COVID-19. Things changed. We were faced with a lot of challenges. Face-to-face -face classes had to be canceled. National Treasury reduced our budgets, but we still needed to 
deliver on our mandate. Remote working that happened during lockdown, we needed to have uninterrupted service delivery, even if we were at home. We had to come up with new ways of doing things. And that is why we are here today, because of technology that we are using to connect, to give class. Remember I said the budgets were cut, but we had to buy laptops and data that was required to ensure that we continue to deliver our services. People needed to be trained on how to use Zoom, on how to use Teams, how to conduct a virtual class. There was no budget that was made available for these new tools. Also, IT infrastructure, it was required. We needed to broaden our IT infrastructure to ensure that we can accommodate all the people that were coming onto the network of the NSG. Because all of a sudden, we were all at home. We had time to do our various courses. Or we wild away time with the NSG courses, which was a good thing. It was good for us. Revenue went up. Emergency procurement as part of rapid response to COVID-19. We had to buy sanitizers, we had to buy masks. Things changed, but through it all, we needed to make sure that we are still able to deliver on the mandate of the NSG. A lot of research had been done about digital transformation. We were presenting papers, we were going to conferences on digital transformation, but it was never actioned. However, due to COVID, the impact of COVID-19, it happened overnight. For us to remain standing as the NSG, we had to accelerate digitization and ensure that there is digital transformation in the ETD space. So that is where we are as the NSG, and that is the reason why we are here as um, facilitators to capacitate you on how we need to ensure that we still deliver on our main date. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm not gonna take too much of your time. I think I have uh, used up all my 15 minutes. I see the timekeeper is looking at me out of the brim of his glasses, which means that my time is almost up. I hope you will enjoy the day with us. And those who are also joining um, virtually, please um, just feel free to participate. And when you need to raise a question, you may just um, pose a question, you may raise your hand on chat. I want you to put your hands together as I welcome our speaker today. And mind you, I said, you need to fasten your safety belt. Make sure that your seat belt is on, otherwise you are going to fall off. And I don't want to lose any of you. I see my Eastern Cape colleagues have just arrived. So it means now we can start running. You know, in the Eastern Cape, everything goes a little bit slower. So if they are here, it means that we can start running. So our speaker for the day is none other than Ms. Soraya Arendt. She has a BSc degree from the University of Pretoria and a master's degree in business leadership from UNISA. She also completed a diploma in practitioner coaching during her 30 plus years as a public servant, I'm going to repeat, during her 30 plus years as a public servant, Soraya served in different capacities on national and provincial government level. Now it makes you wonder how old is Soraya? I don't know. <laughs> she enjoys facilitating and believes that one is never too old to learn. You can still teach an old dog new tricks, eh? She regularly enrolls for short courses that will help her to develop on a professional and a personal level. Exercise is not one of Soraya's favorite things, but she manages to keep fit on a weekly basis taking dance classes. It is for you to find out what kind of dance she does. If anyone gets that right by the end of the day, I will give you a gift. Over, no, not ballet. <laughs> you're almost close, but you're not there. Over weekends, she ignores the fact that she is middle-aged. 
Yes, she ignores the speed limits and goes for a ride on her motorcycle, a Harley Davidson. And her favorite quotation is by Dr. Sua. And that quotation goes like, you have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction that you choose. You are on your own and you know what you know. You know, you know what you know. And you are the guy who will decide where to go. So ladies and gentlemen, let us put our hands together for Ms. Soraya Arendt. Thank you very much, Soraya, over to you. Audible now? Yep. So I'm not sure if I will be able to um, stick to that high expectation that was just created, but thank you very much for that kind introduction, Easy. Um, I want to say good morning to all of you, and uh, I'm not going to make the same mistake um, as my colleagues did yesterday, so I am fully kitted out with the, the age thing, so please just bear with me. Um, and I hope that I'm going to remember everything that I need to remember to do today. In the interest of full disclosure, this is the first time that I'm running a workshop in this format. So um, I'm going to learn to be a facilitator all over again, because this is the first time that I'm doing this in the blended version that we are doing things today. So. Uh, I might make some mistakes, so I'm going to beg for your forgiveness up front. Uh, and hopefully when you are in a situation where you're also struggling with using technology and maybe making a mistake, you will remember that you forgave me today and you will ask other people to forgive you as well. So we are going to jump into the program, but before we start, I actually want us to, in the venue, please make sure that you are an even number because we are going to work in pairs very soon. So if there's one or three of you at a table, I need you to be a good public servant and be redeployed. So I want you to find a partner to work with for the rest of the morning. So we're gonna work in twos. For the people who have joined us virtually, I, mean, I wanna see some movement. I'm spotting some threes and some ones. So please find a partner to work with. We're going to work in twos. And then for the online people, the people joining us from home or from the office, you are going to be put into breakaway groups of two each. Now, we might have some problem children online as well. So you might end up in a group and the other person does not show up. Then I want you to just return to the main session so that we can find you another partner. Right. So that is how we are going to, to manage the, the room discussions and the virtual discussions. So what I want you to then do as a first round is for the people um, online, I would like you to please switch on your cameras. Open your cameras and I want you to wave at each other. And for the people in the room, please say hello to the person next to you, keeping in mind that we have to social distance and just greet everyone. Let's just greet everyone. Online, let me see some faces. I'm gonna put you into gallery view so that we can see a few more of the people who are joining us online. Um, I'm not sure if on the screen, I don't see the gallery view. I see it here. OK. 
Okay, can I get some? Oh, I'm not seeing any faces online. I might be frozen now in terms of technology because I've just overloaded the system. Did you all say hi to each other? Blow some kisses. Hi, right. Online people, welcome to the session. Right, I'm happy to see all of you. Right, I see a few people popping up online as well. Thank you so much for that. Right, good morning. Thank you for that round of applause from the online people. Okay, so let's jump into the presentation of today and let's get to know each other. Oh, Kubeshni, you got the answer right. She was online. She guessed the, the dance form correctly. Right. So we are going to go into the art of facilitation. So today we're going to practice some of the elements. But please remember from yesterday, we are only touching the surface of what needs to be done. Right. So you have to actually now take a little bit of the learning today. And I encourage you to go and learn more and practice more um, in your own work environments and, and where you are practicing the art of facilitation. So let's just go into Zoom netiquette or etiquette. And I'm sure that you're all aware of these things. I'm just going to briefly touch on them. So yesterday we started saying, let's be on time. Please come prepared if that is relevant. Please keep your... Um, mic muted uh, turn on your camera when you are in your your breakout sessions it, it is just a good practice for the person that you are talking to to be able to see your face so that um, you know who you are talking to now the you know you in the beginning we spoke a lot about when we started using zoom we saw people in their pajamas on their bed joining joining the meetings now i'm hoping that that's not the case anymore but if you are ever in a Zoom meeting, uh, just be prepared to at least at the top bit that is visible on the camera to be properly dressed. Okay. <laughs> okay, I, I'm, hearing, I'm hearing Dr. Marja saying that um, only the top needs to be good, the rest doesn't matter. Okay, so if that is, that is what you want to do, by all means, make sure that people can see you, that there's good lighting, Find a quiet place if it is at all possible. It helps to wear headphones. Um, know what's going on behind you, although we do have a lot of forgiveness for each other in terms of that, because I think every one of us have been embarrassed by someone walking by or, or the dog coming in to say hi or the children wanting mommy's attention. Um, then we know to raise our hands, to stay attentive and to be respectful. I also want to appeal that we apply the Chatham House rules, and I'm just going to briefly summarize it for those of you who are not familiar with it. Participants are free to use the information received, but neither the identity nor the affiliation of the speakers nor that of any participant may be revealed. So let's just respect each other by adhering to those rules. So um, I want to do a quick check in. I'm going to ask the people in the online platform to just um, give me some pointers in the chat on how you are feeling after going through the first day of this workshop, starting on day two. So just give me that. And then I'm going to take a few hands in the room. So please raise your hand in the room if you want to share how you are feeling this morning. And I'm going to need the guys with, with our microphones to just assist. Any hands in the room? Right, I've got here in front one. Let me just recognize one more and one here. Right, I'm gonna check the chat while we wait for the microphones to arrive. Right, informative and exciting for what is coming today. Anticipating a good day, ready for the day. Oh, there's someone battling to open their camera. So I, I'm hoping that by later in the morning, that'll get right. Informed, empowering, let me hear. Please just introduce yourself by saying your name and then please proceed with your input. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. My name is Johanna Maponya. Uh, this morning I feel transformed as a facilitator because when I was sitting here yesterday, I, when it comes to self, I had to travel back to me that 
<clears throat> to be able to interact with other people, I have to know self. You, I can't be able to respect other people if I don't know who I am. Because firstly, respect for you to get it, you need to give it. And when it comes to uh, culture, stereotypes, the way I think, I have to be transformed so that I can be able to accommodate other people and relate with them very well. Thank you. Thank you so much for that input. Then um, over here, thank you. And while we wait for that, I'm just going to read a few. Yesterday was an eye opener for a new way of doing things, positive and eager to learn and again empowered. Thank you so much. Please proceed. Uh, good morning, colleagues. My name is Noko Lokele, commonly known as Nox. Uh, today, I feel hopeful. Despite everything that we are going through as a country, as the trainers in the space of the public service, uh, I still feel hopeful. More things, more good things are still coming. The public service is going to be what we want it to be. Thank you. Thank you, Knox. Can I get uh, two more hands in the room? Right, there's one. And can I get another one so that we can just get the microphones to you? One more. One more in the room. Going, going there. Okay. Dion, thank you. Let me just go back to the online platform for a moment. Joined late yesterday, but I feel energized and in anticipation of a good session. Thank you so much. Can I ask you to please proceed? Just introduce yourself and then give us your input. Uh, good morning, colleagues. My name is Sydney. I am from the Northwest in the office of the Premier. Uh, really, yesterday, I think I think I've learned a lot. Uh, I think the world of work has changed. Uh, in the past, we were used to a classroom uh, 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 type of facilitation. Now, due to the uh, due to the COVID nineteen, we have to then get transformed and move from the classroom situation and use ear learning. Uh, today, I would feel very much great if uh, the, the what you call facilitator, I think if professor or doctor uh, at the annual, uh, to please help us uh, to then include Zoom to achieve this uh, facilitation uh, at the Unistan at Sakwa, at the specifically at the outcome number one, which says uh, plan and then prepare for facilitation at the using Zoom. Then I think the second, I think outcome says facilitate at the learning, which I think you are going to do now. You are now facilitating at the learning. Then, then I want to see it uh, 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 doing it at the practical. Then lastly, it says you should, I think, uh, one should then, uh, 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 one should then evaluate at the facilitation using the fourth, uh, the fourth, I think, industrial and technology. Um, I think lastly, I also want you to please, I think, uh, uh, to please, I think, assist us to then, I think, evaluate learning based on the four levels of Kirk, Kirk and Patrick's uh, reaction learning, then the result. I think specifically, I mean, these two. Thank you very much. Thank you for that input. Now, um, just listening to that one, I think we're going to need three more weeks. Right. So um, some of the things I can certainly, we can work with you offline to assist you with that. Um, and as we've been saying yesterday and today, we'll just be touching the surface. 
And as far as learning to use Zoom, I can't do it for you. You need to do it for yourself. You can go and download a free version, version and you can start using it. Or you can use Teams and there's other platforms as well that you could potentially use. Right, I'm going to take an input from Dion and then I'm going to move on. Thank you, Dion. Good, good morning, colleagues. My name is Dion Bloomstein and I'm part of the National School of Government. I think it's quite a privilege to be here today and to be part of this learning hub. And I'm actually feeling excited and looking forward to see what I can learn. Uh, you sit on uh, the bike ride, right? So uh, I'm holding on tight and I have my helmet on. So thank you so much for the, the opportunity. Thank you, thank you, Dion. So hold on tight. We are going to, to have a, a good ride, right. Um, I've lost the slide now. So must I reshare? So this is a learning opportunity. This happens, right? I lost the slide. I have to now reshare so that all of you can see it. I'm still not seeing the slide on the screen. I'm seeing it here. I did. Now I am sharing. I've stopped sharing. I'm starting again. Still not. And, and while they're fixing this for me, can I just explain to you what support network I have in this room, right? So you're aware of the sound guys. You were aware that I'm plugged into the sound so that you can hear me both in the room and that you can also hear me online. Then I want those ladies at that table to just wave. There's four of them sitting there. And without them, we will not be able to have the people online in the room. So I'm not doing this on my own. And there's actually a lot of time. A lot of time. And a lot of time. I'm hearing two of myself. Okay, are we sorted? So um, I can't do this by myself. And just know that every facilitation session takes a lot of background planning. Right. You cannot move in, uh, just walk into a room and start facilitating. We had to think through every element of what we are going to do today and think how we are going to present it. It is slightly easier if it's only a classroom or a face-to-face -face setup or only an online setup, but you still need to do the planning. And the planning is double because we've got you here in the room and we also have the people at the back. So let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, online. Okay, I've lost the internet. So, and technology has just deserted us. So we breathe through it, we fix it, we go on. Still not on here. Okay. Um, Marty, are you sharing your screen? Okay. We will share the screen from our support staff. You see, that's why it's handy having them around so they can be my backup. That's fine. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So thank you for that. We will then. Um, Okay, I will then have to work on that one. Right. So yesterday we spoke about the shifts in terms of what we as facilitators need to do. And you remember that yesterday Dr. Sell spoke about instead of us focusing on changing others, we now need to start focusing on self-transformation. And I appreciated the, the first comment we took from the floor this morning, um, where people actually said to us that um, they have gotten to know themselves so much better. So thank you for that. So in terms of changing 
um, the, the self and the self transformation. Just to recap, you need to understand your African identity, your emotions, your behaviors and your attitudes. You have to be learner centered, participatory, interactive and inclusive, be consultative, authentic, ethical and flexible. And I'm hoping that you have a better understanding of what those terms mean now. Your roles and your competencies as a facilitator, you have to understand your own character strengths, your values, your social and emotional skills, and you need to be committed to anti-discrimination and tolerance. So that is just a recap of some of the concepts that we had dealt with yesterday. So I'm going to ask you to do some self-reflection now. So I'm going to allow, can we just go to the next slide, please? I'm going to allow for five minutes of self-reflection. Right. Um, you can just scroll up, Marty. Thank you. Right. So I want you to, for five minutes, on a piece of paper in front of you, or maybe just making some mental notes, but I want you to make notes or remember what you are saying, because we are going to share this insight in, in our next exercise that we are doing. So I want you to just think about how do I create a non-threatening and a safe environment? Okay, again, the slide's missing. Thank you, Kulsa. How do I, and this is you as facilitator, create a non-threatening and a safe environment? How do you engage the learners in the classroom? How do I make the learning practical? How do I demonstrate leadership, commitment, knowledge, and experience when I'm interacting with learners? And what energy do I bring? So what energy do you as a facilitator bring when you are interacting with the learners in the classroom? I'm going to allow five minutes. Uh, we will be, for the online people, posting this slide in the chat so you can download it and open it where you are so that you also have the questions in front of you. Right, so I'm going to allow five minutes for just some quiet reflection on these questions.
You have about two minutes left. Please start wrapping up, even if you've just managed to go to one or two of the questions, that's fine. All right, so can I get the next slide, please? So we are going to go into the first very important skill that someone needs to have. Um, just enter again, thank you. Um, and that is the art of listening. As a facilitator, we have to be able to listen. So when you are listening, and it doesn't matter whether you are doing it in an online or a virtual environment or whether you are in a physical environment, you have to be aware of your uh, positioning and your posture. So how are you carrying yourself? You also need to be aware of your body language and also be aware of barriers to communication. Now with us interacting in a virtual environment, there's a huge number of potential barriers to the communication and we have to try and limit them to the best of our ability. Next point, please. You need to listen with a quiet mind. Now, yesterday, when you did the uh, exercise of relaxing and going to the beach, uh, I want you to just think back how difficult was that for you, or maybe it was very easy for you to quieten your mind and to be relaxed in yourself. Now, when we are listening to someone, we call it listening attentively. It means that you don't allow your own process to get in the way you actually quiet, you actually content with just listening to the other person. So you are focusing on what they have to say. Next point. Then you need to also ensure that you hold a safe space. You create it and you hold the safe space. Now you do that by agreeing that everything being said in this discussion is confidential. And remember, I reminded you of the Chatham House rules in the beginning, and that is what we want to aim for. I want you to trust the other person, trust yourself, trust the process. We need to have respect. And in any other discussion, also contract for time. So we need to agree on how much time we are going to give each other. So next point, we are going to work in pairs now. You can just put them all up, thank you. So the way that this is going to happen now, in the virtual space, you are going to be sent out into a breakaway session in pairs. So you're gonna be paired up with someone. 
We will be sharing this slide with the people in the chat box, so you can go and open it there so that you have the instructions in front of you. And in the room, I want you to pair up. And that's why I asked you to find that you're either two or four at a table, right? And if you still don't have a partner, perhaps you can find one for the duration of this exercise. So we are going to practice our listening skills. So the way in which we are going to do that is the first person is going to take 10 minutes and they are going to share their insights into the questions that I've just asked you, the personal questions that I asked you to reflect on. So I want you to share with the other person for 10 minutes, how do I create a non-threatening and safe environment? How do I engage learners? How do I make the learning practical? How do I demonstrate leadership, commitment, knowledge, and experience? And what energy do I bring? You use 10 minutes. The second person, you just listen. Right, so I want only half of the people to be speaking in the 10 minutes, the first 10 minutes. The second person, if you really, really must, and the first person go quiet, the only thing I'm encouraging you to ask is, what else? What else? It's the only words that can come out of the second person's mouth in the first 10 minutes. Right. Then after 10 minutes, we will broadcast a, a time reminder to the people online, and I will also announce it in the room. For two minutes, the person that had been listening, I want you to just share what you remember of what the first person told you. And then for just two minutes, and then we're going to swap around. And for another 10 minutes, the other person is now going to share their insights. So what insights did you have on the self-reflection questions for 10 minutes? Now the other person must be quiet, must listen with a quiet mind and are only allowed to ask what else. And then we'll have another two minute feedback. And then we're going to come back and join the plenary with the people online and the people in the room. You all clear on that instruction? I will keep the slide up for the people in the room so that you will be able to refer to it. The slide will be shared in the chat for the people who are online. And uh, just another insight, I keep on losing connectivity. So I'm in and out of the Zoom session. As a backup, I've got a paper printout. I've got my glasses so I can read. So just remember, you need to be prepared, right? You can't rely on technology always, right? Okay, so I'm going to start the 10 minutes now. I'm not going to be as exact as uh, our program <laughs> director yesterday, um, but I it's, uh, it's around 12, uh, no, six minutes to 10 o'clock at this point in time. So we are going to give you 10 minutes. So please go into your pairs in the room physically and in the virtual space, you will be sent out into breakaway rooms.
So there's about three minutes left for the first person to share. Right, so we've got everyone back. Um, we're going to go out into the online, back into the breakouts. Now, we had a challenge, so some of you, not back yet, okay. Um, those of you in the room, um, the one that was listening, please share what you remember from what the first person told you for around two minutes. And then I'll make another announcement, and we're going to swap over for a 10-minute one. Okay, we've got the people from the online back into the main. We're going to send you back into your breakouts, and we're going to give you another 10 plus two minutes. You need to swap around now, and the other person now needs to share, and then take two minutes at the end to share what you remember if you were listening. Okay, so another 12 minutes.
So there's two minutes left for the person who's speaking to, to continue sharing. So in the last two minutes, the person who's been listening, please tell the other person what you remember. You can go to slide seven, please. We are just waiting for the online people to rejoin us. Right, so welcome back to our virtual participants, um, people in the room, thank you for the robust engagements. Can we settle down, please? Thank you. Right, so um, I need the microphones ready again. So I want you to share some insights that you had. And my question to you in the room and on the online platform, uh, is how do you feel when someone is paying attention to you? How do you feel when someone is paying attention to you? 
the people who are here virtually, you're welcome to type in the chat box your answer. If you want to bring your room into the voice, uh, your voice into the room, sorry, you're welcome to raise your hand and we'll allow you then to unmute yourself and participate. So let me see some hands. There's one there and at the back. Right, so let me get the one in the back first. Please introduce yourself and how do you feel when someone is paying attention to you? We can't hear you. Right. Morning, morning, everyone. And uh, when I feel when when uh, oh, I'm Julia Zwane. When someone is listening to me, I feel very excited and I feel uh, like going on and, 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 and more so when you see someone nodding and uh, acknowledging that yes, whatever you are saying, it, it, they understand. And it makes me feel so overwhelmed and excited and uh, uh, that I am, I am uh, delivering what is expected. Thank you for that insight. Then there was another hand here, lady in the brown shirt. Okay, my, my microphone. Too. I'm here, madam. <laughs> okay, who's speaking? I'm Anthony Sampson okay. uh, from the most beautiful province, Eastern Cape. <laughs> right, please, please proceed. Yeah, I, I think when, when someone is paying attention to me, I feel very appreciated and valued because then I can make my contribution. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, there's another one. I'm come, I won't forget about you, I promise. Uh, who, at the back. Morning, everyone. My name is Mutanzi Lusaba. Uh, from one of the biggest hospitals in the province and the country. Uh, um you you feel good i feel good when someone is uh, listening uh, attentively with understanding of course because sometimes you might think that somebody's listening uh, i'm 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 very much excited to even uh, realize that my partner here uh, really understood what I was presenting to him. Though he cannot say it word for word, but uh, you know, the bigger part of what I've said, he was able to share it back to me. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I want to give the lady in the brown shirt, just raise your hand. She's been dying to jump in. Please go ahead. Thank you. My name is Imelda Baloy from the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture. Um, I felt uh, valued and also respected. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to take one last comment there, lady in the blue shirt, and then I'm going to go to the online platform. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rebecca Mavunga. I share the sentiments that other colleagues have already expressed of feeling excited, feeling like going on and on because you see that people or this person is paying attention to you. But at the same time, I experience a challenge of wanting to go on in such a way that I end up drifting, going out of topic and talking about something else again because she's listening to me. Okay. And then I end up saying, oh, where, where was I? Let's go back to the topic. <laughs> I, I think that might be a unique female thing. <laughs> but it is allowed. And what is wonderful around this is by just talking to someone who's really paying attention to you, it frees up your own mind to go where it wants to go and bring insights that you might not have had 
previously. I'm going to just take a few of the comments in the chat. Um, Titani, our group, sorry, I'm now jumping a bit because people are really firing away, but I've lost that one. I feel like what you say matters, that they have an interest in what I'm saying. I'm energized, I'm respected and valued. I feel included and motivated. I feel respected. So it very much echoes what was said in the room. Now, Yila, you have your hand up. So I'm going to ask people to allow you to unmute. And uh, if you can open your camera, please do so. And then please share your thoughts with us. Now, Yila. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you hear, am I audible enough, ladies and gentlemen? You are. Thank you, thank you very much. You know, having a person listening to you on this platform creates that you're wonderful and a spirit and that uh, you feel valued and uh, you are triggered. In a way, you're just triggered to say a lot. You go on and on as other people are saying. But above all, there's something, because you don't see this person, there's that little nervousness at the back. How is Pauli Mgomezulu thinking about what I'm saying? How is Norma Mbembelele? I'm referring to the people that I've been chatting to. Uh, there is that bit of nervousness, nervousness, but you overcome that by their reactions. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you to everyone for opening up and having respect for the conversation and just listening to the other person and validating their story by being there for them. Now I want to close the session because we are approaching tea time. Ten. Okay, tea is only at 11, so we have a bit more time. So I want us to um, just, I want to challenge you by asking you, when was the last time that you gave your significant other 10 minutes of your undivided attention? When was the last time that you gave your child 10 minutes of your undivided attention? Right, so I'm going to ask you to knock their socks off this evening. So when you get home, tell them, I'm going to give you 10 minutes of my undivided attention. And then you sit and you listen. You sit and you listen. And then perhaps check in with them how they experienced it. Can I ask you to take up that challenge? You all in? Yeah. Right. So this evening, you're all going to surprise either your significant other or your, the person you share your home with or a child and give them 10 minutes of your undivided attention. Right. I need to just make sure tea is at 11 o'clock only. Right. So before I move on to the next topic, I do understand that someone, some of the people in the online platform were a bit surprised by us putting them in breakaway sessions. Right, so it might be the first time that they had experienced that. I want to applaud you for embracing the challenge and at least trying. I know I did ask you to keep your cameras on when you are in the online platform. If you have a problem with your bandwidth, it is actually better to just leave your camera off, but at least then unmute yourself so that the other person can hear you. We also had to go into groups of three in the online platform because I wasn't aware that there's a limit on the number of breakouts. And because we have so many people joining us virtually, we actually had to make groups of three but I am going to trust that you manage the time well and you still all had a time to share online. Um, I also want to make an announcement that um, we are on social media, so Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and also YouTube. We're streaming live on YouTube. 
And as a side note, this video will be made available on YouTube as well. So you can go and watch it again. Uh, if you want to interact by using social media, please use the hashtags PSTF2021 or hashtag professionalization or hashtag HRD landscape. I'm going to repeat that hashtag PSTF2021 or hashtag professionalization or hashtag HRD landscape. Did I get that right? The handle, what's the handle? At the NSG ZA. Handle at the NSG ZA. Oh, I see it here, thank you. I didn't have my glasses on for that one. <laughs> okay, right. Um, there's a question on the YouTube link. Um, we, I think you can just go to YouTube and search for the, the National School of Government and you will find our site. And all the videos that we have been recording with our combined sessions is actually available there as well for you to go and watch. So that is a learning opportunity for you on a different variety of topics. All the masterclasses, for example, that we have recently run is available there, it's been recorded, it's been shared. So you can go and uh, check those out. Okay. So can I get the next slide? What's happening here? Do you think that this poor dog is getting good feedback? Okay. And this is just a lighthearted way of me encouraging you to start thinking about how do we give feedback? Do we actually give feedback so that it, it serves as being constructive and developmental? Or do we just say bad dog? Speaking from experience, I'm pretty much a bad dog person. And I've realized that I had to do better. Okay, so next slide, please. So I'm going to give you some guidelines on how to give feedback. Now, there is actually a lot of tools available out there that you could consider. I'm just gonna highlight three of these. Some will work better in some circumstances than others. And I encourage you to find the one that you are most comfortable with and perhaps the one that you think is most appropriate in the environment. I see a lot of you are taking photographs of the slides. We will be sharing them via email and in the chat at the end of the session. So you will get access to them if you want to refer to them. Okay. So let's look at the first one. The first one is three W's, W, W, W. And it's not the World Wide Web, okay? But it's a nice way to remember it, W, W, W. So you focus on what went well, what didn't go so well or too well, and what can you do differently next time? So what went well, what didn't go so well, and what can you do differently next time? Then another one that you can use is a tool that we call FACTS. And FACTS is an acronym to help you remember. So you start with giving the facts. That's the F. Make sure that you are accurate, consistent, timely and specific. It means that don't wait six months until you give someone feedback. And for those of us who are managing people, it's good practice to give continuous feedback and timely feedback. 
by using the facts and being accurate and consistent. Then another technique, and it's sometimes referred to as the sandwich technique, but I don't like some of the descriptions given for the sandwich technique. So I'm just going to call it when you do X, Y happens. So I propose this. Let me give you an example. You were late to our meeting the last few mornings, which made a few of us have to reschedule our days. In the future, I'd like you to focus on getting here on time. Did you get that? When X happens, or when you do X, Y happens, I propose the structure of that feedback. So I've given you some guidelines now on how you can actually give good feedback. We are going to go into our discussion groups again, whether that is in twos or threes. Um, I'm going to give, uh, let's give 15 minutes in total. So I want you to manage your own time. Right, I will give you a five minute and a 10 minute and a 15 minute warning. I'm gonna give you a total of 15 minutes for you to practice giving feedback. Can I get the next slide, please? So I, I am giving you two examples. You can use these examples or you can use an example that you have recently either been confronted with or had to practice in your own environment. And I want you to apply either the WWW method or the facts method, or when you do X, Y happens, I propose method. And in your groups, practice giving that feedback. So online, virtual participants, we're going to send you into breakout sessions for 15 minutes. Please manage your time. Um, in the room, go into your pairs or your triad discussions and practice giving the feedback, the example, if you want to use it. You've stepped into a new role and don't seem to be handling things well. How can you give better feedback on that example? You seem annoyed in the meeting yesterday. It made reaching a decision very difficult is another example, which I'm going to challenge you to improve on or use an example that you have recently had to deal with. You're all clear on the instruction? Um, online, I'm just going to check. The slide has been shared with the people online. So you can go and open it there, the people who are joining virtually in the chat. You can download that one. I'm going to give you 15 minutes to practice. Then we're going to do There's a hand up in the Zoom room. Okay. Um, AB in Blovo, please proceed. Okay. Th uh, thanks, Soria. I wanted just so you remind the uh, people uh, to unmute their mics when they get to the, uh, to the uh, small groups, because we had a challenge uh, with one or two people not being able to communicate. And Thank I, you. I sent, I sent a message even to, to you uh, on the chat, uh, but the whole 10 minutes went and the next one went before the, the next person joined us. So it was a silent discussion. Okay, thank you for that reminder. If you are in the breakout session, please unmute. Charles, your hand is also up. Uh, thank, thanks, Doctor. It's the same uh, issue which um, AB is raising. I'm only alone in the chat room. I've done it through audio and I've, I had to type my responses and I don't, just don't get a feedback. I've actually then posted it to Calsum to, to check because I cannot name the person because it's just a number, but I've shared my views and I don't get any response right. in both times. Thank you. So let's respect each other. If you end up in a breakout session, unmute yourself at the very least. If you can open your camera, 
share in the two or the three people that is there. And if the person on the other side is a naughty child and not responding, please come back to the main room and we will put you in a different breakout session. Would that help? Online people, can I get a thumbs up? Uh, no. Can you hear me? Yes, please, please mute. Who's speaking? Raise oh, your hand. Jack, it's Jack. I've got no hand. Av, uh, uh, you've got no hand. Okay. Yeah, but what 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 I wanted to to indicate, maybe at some point, uh, you sh there should be an opportunity for the visual uh, people to raise their frustrations, which may be issues that may hamper, you know, uh, the visual learning, because we are experiencing it a number. It's very interesting. Uh, okay, would you want to raise them now? Okay, I, I thought maybe we are going into another time for something else. Okay. And, uh, it may take some time, but, but yeah. Okay, can I ask that you please type them in the chat over tea time so that I can take a look at that and we can try and resolve your issues for you. Is it sticks? Okay. Oh, there are many sticks out there. All right. I told him yesterday. You don't okay. need to buy sticks to do that kind of work. Okay, please mute. There are many sticks piled in all there. Who's speaking? Please mute. Thank you. If you do have challenges, please type it over tea time so that I can take a look at it and we can make a plan to accommodate you in that. So we're going to give it another try. We're going to go into our breakout sessions. I'm going to reduce it now to 10 minutes. All right, guys. Because I don't want to interfere with your tea time. I want you to practice giving feedback using the methods that I've explained to you. Right, we can go to breakout. Thank you.
So we have about two minutes left for this exercise.
Okay, so we've just welcomed our virtual participants back to the main session. Um, I see that our challenges are persisting, that we have some problem children online. Sorry, can we just focus in the room? Thank you. Um, so please uh, rename yourself you? if you... Uh, okay, I, can I just finish my sentence and then raise your hand and I'll give you a chance to talk? online. Um, please rename yourself because we can't sort of know who you are if you're just a number. So please remember that. And uh, if you didn't get any responses, then uh, please come back to the main room and we will assign you to a different participation group going forward. Right. Um, I know that you have some connectivity challenges. If you do lose it, just come back into the session and continue. Um, then I want to, who was it that wanted to say something? Please just give me an indication. The person who started speaking. Okay, I don't see anyone. Right, um, can I get slide 11, please? Right, so we have now practiced um, giving feedback, but what is also important for us as human beings to understand how to best receive the feedback. So what happens when your boss tells you, I want to see you in my office? What did I now do? Okay, so these are the steps for you to follow if you are in a situation where you are receiving feedback. Slide 11, please. Right. So what you can try and remember is this time it's the triple A, not the triple W, the triple A. Acknowledge the feedback, ask for more information, and then to add your own perspective. So that is a tool that you can use when you are receiving feedback. Or there is another tool which we call the six steps. Stop your first reaction because what is that first reaction? I want to be defensive. I want to tell them they are wrong. I want to protect myself or defend myself, right? Remember the benefit of getting feedback. And if feedback is done properly, you should benefit from it, right? If you use the WWW or the facts or the when you do X, Y happens, this is what I propose as a manager, then the feedback will actually be very productive for you. Listen for understanding. Now you see why I made you listen earlier today, right? Listen attentively. And don't answer before you are done listening. Get out of your own head and just listen. Say thank you for the feedback. Place it in a positive frame of mind. Then you ask more questions to deconstruct the feedback. So if there's anything that you're unclear of, this is your time. And if you need to ask time to follow up. Create a bit of space between you receiving the feedback and you having to respond to that feedback. That allows you the time to start thinking about it, to digest what has just been given to you, and then in a calm manner, do something about it. And not just perhaps be angry and act on your first response. So um, I'm going to skip the next exercise in the interest of time. And can I go to slide 13, please? Um, I'm going to need the mics. 
I just want to ask you, slide 13, please. What insights did you have regarding giving and receiving feedback? And I'm going to take two quick responses from the floor, two or three. I'm going to check the chat. I've now lost connection again, so I'll come back to the chat room. Um, can I see who would like to share insights that you've had regarding giving and receiving feedback? Anyone? Is it too late in the morning now? Lady in the red jacket, please. And there's another one. Okay, so please proceed. Lady in the red jacket, introduce yourself and give your feedback. Someone is sabotaging me, okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Michal. Leading one and I, I see from the NSG. Yeah, what I've learned from giving and receiving feedback is that it can break or build someone. So it's good to give constructive feedback in most instances and being in a positive state of mind, especially when you receive feedback, like you've indicated, is also a good thing because normally uh, we want to be defensive and it is in our nature as human beings to always expect positive feedback, but also constructive feedback is needed because it can help develop us or build us. Thank you. Thank you, provided that it is done correctly. Yes, uh, where was the other hand? Um, there at the back, thank you. I'll come to you, Knox. Th thank, thank you very much. Um, my name is Abi Khaile. Um, I have an example that I never forget or when I, 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 I had to receive some negative feedback from, from my supervisor and um, the, the supervisor was very calm and the supervisor made sure that I don't feel, you know, downtrodden from, from, from the feedback that she gave me. And, and from then I could see like my colleague, the IIC, you know, uh, official says, it can either make or break you. And from then, you know, I, I was able to fly because the feedback was very constructive and my boss at the time was very, very excellent. And I want to say thank you, Surya, you know, for, for, for that. Thank you so much. I'll never forget that. Thank you, Obi. Now you make me blush. Um, Knox? Thank you, Surya. A, a bit took part of my response here, but I was going to say, if the feedback is given in a calm and polite manner, and you can see the person that is not in a fighting mood. So when you receive the feedback, you receive it exactly in that manner. So you become calm, you don't want to defend because you can see the person is giving you genuine feedback with the aim of building you and not destroying you. So the environment and the way you give the feedback is the determining factor of whether the person will defend and then distract it or will accept it and be built in it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. Um, yes, I see the two hands, so I'm going to go to the online. Um, I'm just going to read a few comments. I enjoyed using www because it was always been my way of receiving feedback. I just did not know that it was a particular tool. So now you know. Okay, I'm going to allow Noyila to respond and then I'm gonna allow AB to also bring the voice into the room. So Noyila, please share. Thank you very much. Goddess Noyila is in peace. I forgot to mention that in the first instance. Uh, giving feedback is a very important process, ladies and gentlemen, and few things should be considered. One, the feedback must be clear. When giving that, you must be very clear, accurate and transparent. By receiving, I see receiving as an opportunity to learn more. And what I love 
is the fact that, and which I learned today is give yourself time before responding. You see, allow yourself time to process it. Thank you very much. Thank you for that insight, AB. Online as well, please proceed. Thank you, Surya, thank you. Uh, there, there's just one or two points I wanted to raise about that. It's an observation that um, when you are going to give feedback, um, always keep in mind that the person on the uh, receiving side is in a very vulnerable and in most cases in an anxious state. Uh, because they don't know what's coming their way. So uh, uh, as colleagues have said, I think it becomes very important to lend it nice and gently and with respect, whether it is actually um, very critical, uh, but also to, to, to find things that have happened well so that you can cushion that, that criti critical blow that you may have. But the person is very vulnerable. I also thought that uh, it's important that uh, the feedback must be intended. What do I mean by it must be intended? Uh, in other words, you must uh, prepare for giving feedback. You know, don't make it like body language. You know, I can see that Surya is already upset. You may not think you are giving me feedback, but already you are giving me feedback. And uh, even when your words come afterwards, they may already have been superseded by the body language and other behaviors that you preceded. So uh, those are the questionary things that I saw as very important when one is going to give feedback in particular. Thank you for that. I see some other hands popping up. Um, we are actually running out of time. So I'm going to give a short uh, response time to Komotsu and then a name I can't pronounce, <laughs> uh, Mash Mashabane, please. And then um, I want to wrap up and we can break for tea. So Khomotso, please proceed. Thank you, Surya. I hope you can hear me. My voice is not as it's supposed to be. I just wanted to, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, thank you. I just wanted to also, you know, just thank you for the presentation and also remind you that you also taught us some years ago about the hamburger approach. So you start with something good, something light, then you can give that negative feedback, then you close it with something softer as well. That I find that not only does it help me, but it assists people that I'm giving feedback to. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Masha Barney. Okay. Uh from my side, thank you so much for the presentation. And um, I, I think some, sometimes we, 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 I think we, we just have to remember that um, feedback is, all, is given in an environment that is toxic in itself. And both the person who's giving feedback and the ones receiving it, they are currently at that time in a very toxic environment where they both have to check themselves. But um, I think at, at some point, maybe we just need help as to then, um, if you are receiving a feedback in that toxic environment and you're giving feedback, you also must be ready to be given feedback in the feedback that you've given. So you must also be in, in that safe space yourself where you, and you have not concluded in, the, in that feedback because you've made assumptions and everything else. Be open to actually be given feedback on that and be conscious of it. I think that is quite important because the environment most of the time is quite toxic. You must be conscious of that and, and intentionally create a conducive environment. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to conclude on that note. Um, and again, in the interest of full disclosure, I am only about halfway through what I wanted to do in the time frame that I've allowed myself. So lesson learned next time. It takes longer if you have to facilitate in both environments. So I'm going to give you tea time homework. Right, so tea time homework. So while you are having your tea and, and your snacky out there, um, can I get slide 15, please? And the people at home, yesterday we were reminded this is the time to go and defrost your food, ne? Okay, so while you are having tea, I want you to just share your thoughts on this case study in terms of practical facilitation skills. 
I always enjoy training in remote areas, even though logistics can be unreliable. When I arrived, I was directed to a room with 20 chairs crammed around a few tables. There was no space for my computer and projector. I then realized that the learning material was not delivered. To make matters worse, the power tripped when I switched on the air conditioner. What should I do? I want you to go and share your thoughts on this situation and the challenge that you could potentially face as a facilitator when you are somewhere out there training where the room is not as nice and comfortable as the one we are currently in here or the room that you are finding yourself in in the virtual environment. So let's break for half an hour. Okay, I'm going to take five minutes away. I'm going to ask us to be back at 11.30. So 25 minutes, please. 25 minutes tea break. And then we'll have the second one. Do you want the slide up? Okay, can we just keep sharing slide 15, please? And for the people online, you can also post the PDF version of slide 15. Thank you. See you back here in 25 minutes.
orange. Colleagues, welcome back. Um, do I have everyone back in the house? Hi, ma'am. As long as you are here, then everybody's here. Thank you very much for the acknowledgement. Colleagues, I hope you have enjoyed uh, the break that we had. And I am very happy to see how participative you are. You have been very engaging with Soraya. And I hope you will keep the momentum up until the end of the day. Just one um, reminder from my side, each and every one of you, you have the tags that you were given yesterday. Please ensure that before you go home, you get the tag scanned. Otherwise, it will appear as if you were not here. You were somewhere at the shops. You know, when your departments ask for proof that you were here, we need to give them the register. The tag is your register. Yes. Um, there's a very good looking gentleman there at the back um, who is raising his hand. He is the one who's supposed to tag you. Good looking gentleman. Stand up so that people can see you. You see a bouncer there. A hunk. No, he's standing up. <laughs> My Nisara, please behave. Colleagues, thank you very much. So please make sure that you get scanned before you go home today. And I see I'm still missing the Eastern Cape, colleagues. You know what happens in the Eastern Cape? Even the sun rises very slowly. So when you say to the Eastern Cape, go and have tea, they first go outside to check the environment, and then they have tea. You will see they are going to walk in here just before lunch and we send them out to tea. So that's the Eastern Cape for you. But nevertheless, welcome back. I'm going to hand over to Soraya now so that we can continue with the program of the day. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. I just want to ask the support team I'm not sure if you, did you put pens on the tables? Okay, thank you. Right, so we are going to do some more practical work between now and lunchtime. And let me just check my time. When is lunch? Half past one. Okay, so we've got around two hours to finish this session. Um, Coulson, or whoever is sharing, I'm going to need slide my case study back on the slide, number 15. And the microphones, I'm going to ask that we get one or two feedbacks on the case study from the room. And then I'm going to go to, I see there was a lot of answers in the chat box. So I'm going to just go there after we've we've done the feedback from the room. So who wants to share? Okay, there's a hand right at the back. And can I take one more hand? There was someone over to you who volunteered, but I can't spot them now. I'll see if I can find. Right, so please proceed. How are you going to deal with the case study? We need sound on that mic. Got it, thank you. Okay, uh, good day. It's Rebecca Mwema from Houghton Department of Health. Uh, regarding the scenario that was given, what we are picking up is that there's, uh, it's a facilitator that is complaining here. And the first question was that as a facilitator, why are you complaining? Because this is your responsibility. So it reflects on your planning that planning didn't go well. You didn't plan. You just came uh, empty handed and expect everything to be well. Whereas you are supposed to have started everything and planned everything in time. And also there's an issue with an encouraging. You cannot come and complain about the setup and the chairs. And, and, and expect everything to be well, whereas you didn't come a day before, prepare the venue, prepare the setting, the seating arrangement, 
you were supposed to guide your anchor if you are having a, an anchor, your expectations. And also it reflects on the coordination that uh, the coordination is not well there. As well as they were talking about the, the lights off or the, the online, there was an issue with an on, online. Meaning that as a facilitator or an instructor, you are supposed to have a backup. Maybe the hard copies, you have printed your slides or your laptop, your laptop, if the battery goes off, I mean, I mean the, the electricity goes off, the, the laptop is there, you would have a charged your, your, your laptop overnight so you can continue either using your hard copies, printer, uh, uh, printouts, or you would have used your, your laptop continue whilst waiting to, uh, somebody to sort out the electricity issue. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to remind you that you as the facilitator are your best own resource. You are your best own resource. Just go. You should know your material well enough. You should be able to know what you can proceed with. Uh, you should be able to do crisis management as it was said. You should be able to get the class to continue in whatever, even if you need to go to tomorrow's work today or tomorrow's group's discussion now while you go and sort out some of your logistical issues. So you need to think on your feet and you need to be on contro in control. Um, Kubeshni, I would like to give you the opportunity to speak from the online platform. Kubeshni. Did we lose her? Okay, while well, we try and get her back, can I get one more response from the floor? Right at the back there. Ah, that's the gentleman who offered over tea to respond. Thank you. Good morning, colleagues. My name is Tsepo Rale Tebele from Krishani Bara. Um, just to add on what has been um, uh, re responded to by uh, the colleague, um, because I know uh, previously um, we were once in a situation like that, whereby um, you came into a venue that is too small and uh, quite obviously the people were already seated and that being the case, obviously, um, we have to actually keep somebody um, uh, you know, in check so that whilst maybe the session is actually going on, um, let's start with the work so that come an uh, option like plan B, then you are able to say, um, after say 10 or 15 minutes, then we will be actually moving over to a bigger venue because keeping the people on suspense and people probably, obviously, they come early, then uh, there you are, you don't start frustration and then in itself, it won't actually send also a clear message to the people who are sitting there waiting for you. Thank you. That is actually my take. Thank you. Um, I see... Am I back? Okay. Uh, yes, is that Kubeshni? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, we can, yes, please go ahead. Sorry, uh, I have been muted and the camera was off, so hence I couldn't speak. Um, I think as facilitators, it is important that we prepare for any eventuality. Uh, the two previous speakers spoke about contingency plans. Uh, we've got to have uh, scenario planning. Uh, and that's extremely important as facilitators. Uh, it's you know amazing how much we take for granted. And I think uh, as you've stated, we make the best of any situation. Uh, knowing our material is extremely important and being able then to calm your uh, participants is more important than anything else. We don't know where they've traveled from. We don't know, you know, what transport uh, they used, etc. And so it is important that as the facilitator, we remain calm and we manage the situation as best as possible. Thank you. 
Thank you for that reflection. I'm going to give Noila a chance to speak from the online platform as well as a last comment, and then I'm going to go on. Noila. Thank you very much. It goes without saying that not visiting the venue before is bordering what is termed the unprofessionalism in this scenario. Secondly, a good planner will not hesitate to have two things, a backup and or, or an alternative. Thank you very much. Thank you. So it all goes to planning and planning and planning again, and then be prepared for uneventualities. Like I had my print out here and I still keep on losing connection. Um, and when I say two sentences, I've lost connection twice, but you're not aware of it. I hope not. Okay. So I am able to continue. So thank you for that reflection. Um, I was actually going to go to a few more case studies, but in the interest of time, I'm going to just uh, skip over those. And please just remind you that preparation is key. Um, can I go to slide 17, please? I'm gonna quickly run through sometimes the bane of every meeting, and that is the usage of media. Right, and media, to just recap, traditionally we understood media as being the print or the broadcast media. Then we went into uh, the modern age of websites, blogs, and, and the social media that I've mentioned this morning. Um, and then we also went into media or multimedia, which is the videos, the pictures, the sounds, and the presentations, which is all available to you to use in the classroom um, as, as you see fit. But what is very important, when you use any kind of media in the classroom, whether it's online classroom or physical, remember we're looking at both spaces, you need to make sure that it's relevant that it makes a point and that you debrief it. It's no use just giving um, your group an article to read and you don't ask them for their insights. You can rather shorten the time and still do the insights um, rather than just not reflecting on, on the learning that has taken place. So um, remember, it must be appropriate, short, relevant, and contextual. Next slide, please. So when we work, in terms of using PowerPoint. Now, I'm sure that you've seen many versions over the preceding time and up to now. And I'm also aware of some of the mistakes that I made in the PowerPoint presentation. And sometimes you need to actually just expand the PowerPoint presentation a little bit, right? But I'm going to tell you what not to do. So please just try as much as possible not to do the wrong thing. Okay, so just one back, please. Right. So what is important around PowerPoint is that if it's used right, it provides clarity. And remember, we all learn in different ways. Some of us like listening. Some of us like doing. Some of us like to view things. So we are using all of these different ways to get everyone on board and make sure that we accommodate as many different preferences as we can. PowerPoint is a visual aid tool. So PowerPoint is the tool that you use for people who like to learn visually. If you use PowerPoint wrong, you will have an audience that disengages. They will just zone out. They will start fiddling with their phones. They would sort of just drift off. So it's very important. So I'm going to show you a few examples of what not to do. So you will see the big red cross of what not to do. Next slide, please. Right. So here's an example. Using a picture as a background. I can't read what's on that slide. So don't do that. Next slide. Look at how much there is to read on that slide. Do you think they'll remember anything? Uh -uh. Next one. How about that one? How am I supposed to understand what's happening on that graph? Uh-uh. Okay, next one. 
very, very bright. Very bright colors, no real contrast. In general, green is not a good idea. If you use green, use a very dark version of green. Okay, next slide. Check the font that you are using. It, it's, it's just better to use the simple fonts on a slide. Because remember, it reads so much easier. And the script fonts, the ones that look like handwriting, don't even go there. People have find it very difficult to read. Okay. So that is the not to do. So I'm just going to quickly go to what to do. So just give me the next slide, please. So what I'm showing you here is a summary from a video. And unfortunately, there's no time for us to watch it here in the venue together because it's a 20 minute video. But the link will be on the slide. So if you want to go and watch it, you're welcome to do so because it does give you some good pointers in terms of what to think about when you are using PowerPoint. Now, the person who made this video is called uh, David Phillips. And the rules that he actually gives you in that video, I've summarized for you. So he says, keep your slides to one message per slide, one message. Use contrast and size to steer focus. What often happens is, what is the biggest font on the slide? The heading. Is that the most important part of the slide? Not necessarily. Okay, so why do we use the biggest font on the heading which is less important than the rest? Okay. Um, and also you can use the size and the contrast to steer that. Avoid using sentences. If I show you a big slide and I keep on talking, you're gonna be wanting to either listen or look and you're gonna lose one or the other. So your PowerPoint must just be a summary. Now people are telling me, yes, but we use the PowerPoints as a reflection or a, a record of the meeting or the document. That's not what PowerPoint has been made for. Right. I know it's more work, but actually you need to write your document and summarize it in PowerPoint. PowerPoint should just be the main bullet points. It's called PowerPoint. Okay. And I get a lot of kickback when I say this. So I do understand. I've heard everything that you want to say to me at this point in time. Okay. Then he also recommends that we strive for using dark backgrounds. And on this as well, I get a lot of pushback. But he explains it very well in his video. He shows an example of a white background versus a dark background. And your eyes get very tired from looking at a white background all the time. But now I also know, and I'm also a victim of that, that the, the templates that our organizations give to us all have white backgrounds. And you will see that I'm using the white background, but I'm doing it under protest. Okay. When, when I am doing my own thing, I use a black background because it's just so much lighter on the eyes. And then he says there's a lot of debate around how many objects or bullet points you have to have on a slide. And I know with that one, I've been overstepping the mark sometimes, but he recommends a maximum of six. Six objects or six points per slide. And he makes a valid point, he says, but that means we need more slides. Okay, more slides, not the problem. And I find it silly that when I do a presentation, they tell me two or three slides. Because what do I do with that two or three slides? I stick all the content in the two or three slides. Okay. I would rather have more slides properly laid out with PowerPoints, so bullet points summarized, than having uh, three slides and looking like the one that's got all that reading on it to do. Okay. So that is just a very brief summary. Um, if you want to, you can go onto the internet and you can go and find more guidelines on how to use um, PowerPoint. Can I go to slide 26 now? Uh, I just want to remind the, the people who's in the virtual environment 
There has been a link that was shared for you to complete the attendance register. So please just go and click on that because that's the only way we can verify your attendance when you are online. And as uh, Dr. Easy has said when she opened the session, please make sure that your tags are scanned at least once today so that we know that you were here for the people in the room. Okay. Right. So I'm seeing slide 26. You should be seeing it as well. So I want to just recap what Dr. Sal has shared with us yesterday, and that is the curricul curriculum philosophy of the NSG, right? She spoke about knowing, being, doing, and applying. And that is the way in which we encourage you to facilitate. We want you to incorporate all of these aspects in what was previously known as a lesson plan and what we like to refer to as a facilitation plan. So just to recap, the knowing is the head bit. It's the knowledge, the theory and the context that you bring to the room or to the people. That is normally the easy part because that's the reading. That's what's in the book. That's what's available. But then we need to go towards encouraging people to involve their heart. So to reflect, to have the emotional intelligence, to think about the feelings that the learning brings up for them. And then doing is also important. There we need to have experiential learning. Remember, I said we all learn in different ways. Some people might prefer to actually do the things. You help them by incorporating those elements in your facilitation plan. And then applying can be any of those elements related to the workplace. So what does that now imply for you in the environment where you are actually going to apply the learning, right? So knowing, being, doing, and applying. So now we are going to go into group work again, right? But I'm going to just make sure that you all understand what it is that I need you to do. Um, what is on the next slide? So that is slide 27, right? Um, I'm going to ask the support team to post the documents in the chat box as well. Everything that is on this slide is also typed out. Those of you who are in the room, you will find a Word document on your table. If you can just go and find that and the online people, please go and open. We will have two documents online, Word document and a PDF. Please go and find both documents in your groups. Please raise your hand if you didn't get a Word document and a PDF document. Right. Online, have, have, has the documents been shared? Not yet. Okay. I see a raised hand by Shirley. Shirley, can you please go ahead? Um, support team, just allow Shirley to unmute, please. Thank you very much, facilitator. I wanted to say I didn't receive anything. I'm, I'm online. Okay, it is there in the chat box now. So I need you to go and open your chat box. Okay, thank you, Albi. It's, about, it's at the bottom of, of the screen as you are looking at it. And if you open the chat, you will see there's a facilitation plan, which is a Word document and a document PDF named What is Communication? And you are able to download it if you are in online environment. And in the room, I've given you paper handouts of the Word document and of the PDF document. Are we all on the same page now? Yay, nay. Okay. The, what I wanted to say is that this information that is on slide 27 has been repeated on the Word document, right? So I know that the font is quite small and it's a lot of information, but it is repeated on the Word document that I have handed out, either virtually or in the room. So I'm telling you that you are a facilitator and you've been contracted by the National School of Government. 
I'm telling you that it's for the Department of Infrastructure Development, and you are going to train a group of middle managers. These middle managers are responsible for running community projects, and they are required to communicate with stakeholders on a regular basis. The workshop that we've put together for them will cover four topics. The first one being what is communication, then interpersonal communication skills, stakeholder communication and communicating for social change. So that's the content of the full three day workshop. I'm asking you to compile a facilitation plan only for the first part, dealing with what is communication. So that is the group work that we are going to do now. Compile a facilitation plan on the topic of what is communication. So it's only one part of a fuller, longer workshop. You will have to do the facilitation plan for a session that will be around three hours long. But this is just the plan. Remember, you're not going to present it here. You're going to do your plan. So your discussions in your groups will focus on the plan. Right, it's important that you note that. I want you to, on the Word document, make notes on how you will incorporate each element. And the elements I'm referring to is know, be, do, apply, plus an opening, an icebreaker, and a summary. And I've given you the categories on the Word document. If you want to, in the online environment, type on the Word document, you're welcome to do so. In the room, I've given you big flip chart papers and big pens. You can write on the flip chart papers. Okay. All clear on that. What I've also given you is a four page document, a PDF document, which is a guideline to the content that you need to cover in the first part of the workshop. It's a document dealing with what is communication. And that is a guideline on the content that you have to cover in three hours. So what I want you to do is to go and think about the knowing being doing applying part of what is communication. Can I just get the next slide? This is just a screenshot of the document that I've given you, the PDF, it's the first part. So that is the content. The next slide, please. That is the facilitation plan. So you will find the instructions there again on the Word document. And I've given you a template where you can actually go and make your notes online if you are going into the groups, if you're working there, or if you're in the, in the physical venue, you can use the handout, the, the flip chart paper to do that. Um, I'm going to allow uh, one hour for you to discuss this plan. And we are going to go into bigger groups. So in the venue here, um, you can work per table. And if you are only two at a table and you feel that you would maybe want to join two other colleagues at a different table, you're welcome to do so. But you're also welcome to, to remain in the two group that you are at the table here. Online, we are going to divide you in groups of between five to seven people. So you will have a bigger group that is going to work together. So again, you need to manage yourselves very closely in terms of muting and unmuting. Um, we will give you the rights to share the Word document. If one person in the group wants to share the Word document, the rest talk and someone then makes notes on that. Remember, you are not going to present the workshop. I want you to think about the how, the process. How are you going to present? What is communication? Taking into consideration knowing, being, doing, and apply. Okay. So let me just check if everyone is clear on that instruction before I now send you into the breakout sessions. We will come back after approximately one hour and then up until lunch, I will go and ask some people to. 
Sorry, is that an online person? Please proceed. Was that an online comment? Please raise your hand if you've got a question from the online platform. Okay, so I see Nora said no. Um, there's also a request for us to reshare the attendance register link, which we will do. Okay, I'm going to repeat the instructions very briefly. You will have a Word document on which I've typed out the instructions again, so you will know exactly what to do. The Word document gives you a template of the elements that I want you to discuss in your groups. I want you to reflect on when you are presenting the topic of what is communication, how are you going to incorporate knowing, being, doing, and applying in your group activity and your facilitation plan for a three-hour session. So that is what you need to do. In the online platform, you will be sent into groups of between five and seven. You can work together there and someone can share the Word document on the screen and people can follow there or you can follow on the document that you have in front of you in the room and online you can download it for yourself. All right, in the room, all clear? Just raise your hand if you know what to do. Okay, everyone is now very intimidated. Okay, but I will be around to help you if you need some assistance on that. Um, online, where to access the document, it is again posted in the chat box. So, so show slide 28, please. So just go to slide 28, please. That is the reading. So that's the PDF document that we've shared with you. It's just a first bit. It's four pages of content that you need to cover. But remember, this is not about you covering the content. It's about how you are covering the content using knowing, being, doing, and applying. Okay. Um, I understand your internet connections might be unstable. Please just come back and we will post you back to your breakout session. Um, if you do lose connectivity. Right. So I'm going to give you around 60 minutes. So I'm going to bring you back around one o'clock. And then we will do a debrief. Hear what the brilliant facilitation plans it is that you have thought about. I'm going to ask a few of the groups to report back in the room. I'm going to ask a few people to volunteer from the online groups to also give us feedback and then we would be at lunch. Right, so, um, Anthony, you still don't see the document? Can you just please post it again, Marty? Thank you. Anthony, I've seen, I see five versions already in the chat. So there it comes again. You should have it by now. Um, the people in the room, you're welcome to start working. And then online, we will send you out into the groups and you're welcome to ask us for help if you still struggle.
No. Anybody home? Hello. Yeah. Uh, is that Marty? Hi. This is Jay. Who's in this group? This is the main the main group was Nike actually came back just to ask Marty a question. So I don't think we are supposed to be in this group. I don't know what is happening. I was allocated another group, but I have a question. Hello. Oh, who am I speaking to? You're speaking to Sulu. Oh, you're back in the you back in the main room. In the main room. Oh, okay. I think I'm lost. Colleagues, we're going to move you to a, a breakaway room now. Kunsam. Kumsam. Hi, yes, I can hear you. It's Kumu, so before you move us, I think I was in group one, but we needed to share the um, the screen so that we can work on one document and we couldn't. Are you able to give us the right to share the screen, please? Yes, we can. We can. Yeah. Doing that now. You can take me to, group, to room one, please. Okay, okay, just accept it. You are in room one. Hello. Colleagues? Also, the same yes. thing with our group. I mean, it's, okay. you cannot share the screen. Okay. Can I ask you to click in the breakout room at the bottom of your screen? It will send you to room one. The venue to you. I'm still here, cool Sam. I don't, I'm not sure where I should click. Okay, at the bottom of your screen, it says breakout rooms. No, it doesn't. It doesn't? Mm -mm. It, it just oh. has this red. You see, it just choose on the three dots. You'll click there on the three dots. On the three dots. At the bottom of the screen, it should be somewhere yes. on the right. <laughs> and then it will sh show you break breakout rooms. Thank you. Because you are here. You just need to um, click on it. Jay, I see you here as well. Oh, Have you tried? You? Okay, <clears throat> Jay is moved. Charles, you were... Uh, you are waiting to be moved. Charles, have you tried clicking on breakout rooms? You have been allocated a room. You've just not accepted it. Lizette, same with yourself. And then Malesela. Can you try clicking on breakout rooms? You have been assigned, but have not accepted. Hello, mommy. I can hear you. Lizette, are you winning? I see you still here in the main room. Also, yes. I was at 17. The guy yes. is not speaking at all. There's only one person there. I can't oh. speak myself. So I was, <laughs> okay. in, I was in 16 earlier, so I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, <laughs> it's fine. I'll move it to another room. Is it is it Lizette? Is that you? Are you seeing it now? Who's speaking? Oh, is it Jay? Jay, I, was, I see your I was, name. Was I was I was with Nambu Lelo and I was with uh, uh, yeah, Sybil. Sybil, yeah, I think. So I was in that room. Okay, you was uh, okay. So you nine room seventeen, sixteen. Sorry. 
Just accept it, yeah. Jeffrey? Yes, ma'am. There's no also movement. The rumor was in. Hey, she spoke quiet. There's no one there. There's no one there. Okay, Jeffrey, we'll move you People now. Are there, but no one is saying anything. Okay. Which room were you coming from? Room 17. He was in room 17. He says there's no one there. People are there, but they're all quiet. I don't know. They just they're all quiet, room. is it? Okay. Let me let me try and move you to another room. Um, okay. 12. Room 12 can take more people. Hello, Hassani. What room were you in? Hassani? No. Jeffrey was, I was putting Jeffrey in room 12. Asalaamu As Alaikum, Ms. Oh. Majid. Okay, Jeffrey's gone. He's fine. Ms. Majid, are you okay? Is it room 17? Lizette? Lizette, are you there? Okay, Lizette is not responding. Uh, Hassani, you back here? Are you having challenges? Hello, Hassani? Yes, Is it can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes, I'm just, I'm, I'm at, I think it's a room, uh, I, I've logged in with a cell phone. Eh? Okay. But I'm struggling to ask to view some of the, the documents that you said we, we need to, to have a look at. So I decided to, if maybe I join, log in with a laptop. Yeah. I may, I may be able to 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 see the document. Yes, you have and to. I'm unfortunately, at, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm at uh, room sixteen. If you can redirect me to room sixteen. Room twelve. You're in room twelve. My my room twelve. Yeah. So you yeah, just need because... to accept it. So you were two devices, that's that's the challenge that we're having now. But it's fine, we've moved you to room 12. Okay, um, anyone else? Lizette, I can't hear you. I think you're having some challenges with your audio. Perhaps type a message in the chat box so that I can hear what your challenges are. Um, Garrett? Oh, Garrett? Heard you want to unmute? I can't hear you. Miss Majid, can I uh, assist you? Are you having some challenges? Room 18 and room 19 can still have some people. Yes, I'm going to send Kara to 18. Yeah, let's put uh, Miss Majid there as well because I can't hear her.
Hello. Anybody home? Can we help you? I'm, I'm from room 18. Yes. Apparently, the three of us, the other one is not active. The two of us that we are active, we don't have the, 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 the document. I've asked uh, Marty to email it to my email address, but it's not there yet. Um, okay, let's check. Um, we base your email address. Is it in the chat, ma'am? Okay, let me write it for everyone so that you can see it. I wrote it personally to her. Okay, now I can let me check. Okay, now I can see it, ma'am. Let me quickly email it to you, no problem. Thanks. And then take me back to the group, eh? You can do it yourself. If you click at the bottom of the screen, you will see there's a uh, free double blend. Join. Oh, join the break room. Yes, yes. Okay. Let's go hey. back to the room. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that is that. Okay, thanks. Okay.
Okay, ma'am. Anarish, where you allocated to a room, can we reallocate you to the room? Naresh, can you please indicate um, which group you were in previously?
Guys, I missed you. Did I take it? Where are you? Can we assist you, Nuila? Sir, can we help you? Do you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, I, I lost my team and the one with Dr. San. I had a blackout here. We were in the middle of a very hot and robust discussion. Okay, let me quickly check. Okay, I see it's room free. Let me quickly send you to room free. There you go, sir. Yeah. 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 What's up yourself from? Okay, thank you so much. Nomfundo, um, were you allocated to a room yet? Uh, I was allocated before, but I left and I've joined again. Which group were you allocated to? Can you remember? Ah, uh, it was for a different activity. Okay, so okay, I will send you to some of any of the groups. They are busy with the yeah. uh, activity. Okay. There you go, man. Naresh, good afternoon. Were you allocated to a group before? Yeah. Um, can you go to room six to check what's the issue? Naresh, can we assist you? Yeah. Nolo, I see you are in the room. Do you need assistance to move to a room? Were you allocated a room before? Pradeep, are you, can we allocate you back to your group? Were you allocated a group before? Hi, Marty. Hi, Pradeep. Um, can I allocate you back to your room or were you not allocated yet to a room? Pradeep, can you just indicate to me which group you were, the room that you were um, in for the discussion, or can I allocate you to um, any group that are busy with activity at the moment? Okay, I see your message in the chat, noted. I see, okay. All right, no worries. Any I'm of the other colleagues in the waiting room that can that needs assistance, you can unmute yourself or you can type in the chat. Hi, Martis Nolo. I've been struggling with connectivity as well. 
Okay, do you get, were you allocated to a room yet, Amnolo? No, uh-uh. Okay, I'm going to send you to a room. Thank you. Anyone else that needs assistance? No, I'm not responding. I'm just going to chuck them into you groups. No, it's fine. <laughs>
to go to slides. We can just go together. Uh, support team, we people will have to in the breakout sessions be able to share. Okay, people in the room, we're waiting for our online people to start joining us. And then we will have about 25 minutes for debrief. Okay, I'm just giving everyone from the virtual platform to join back into the big group. Okay, it seems as if most of the people are back. So I wanted to start off by saying well done. I think a lot of thinking and discussion went into this. Some of you found it more difficult than others to complete the assignment, um, but I do congratulate you on the effort and the thinking that went into it. So let's just give ourselves a round of applause, please. Online, you give yourselves a round of applause as well. Right, so I'm going to do a debrief by asking for a few volunteers, a, a few, let's see how time goes. So I'm gonna take one group from here in the physical room, one group from online. I'm gonna ask for a group to volunteer, one of the speakers to share their plan in whatever format they have done it or just talk us through it. And then I'm gonna alternate depending on how much time we have left and get the feedback from both platforms. So can I ask by getting a group to volunteer in the room? Which group think, yay, we got this? 
right at the back there. Can can you please give a? Um, I've noted this one, so I'll give you a chance. But let's start there. Okay, I want to start with that group. Right, so I need you to talk us through because we will not be able to, I don't know, will we be able to get the camera on the flip chart perhaps? If two of you can hold up the flip chart by, and then one person can talk to it, then the online people are able to see it as well. That would be ideal. Okay, your arms are going to get very tired. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Just introduce yourself. Oh, and my name proceed. is Rebecca Mavunga. Uh, I'm from Department of Health, Kern and Kern Rehab Center. So in our icebreaker, we decided that we are going to do the broken telephone. It's broken telephone. Yes. So it's it's a should I explain what, what it is about? Briefly, oh, okay. yes. So the broken telephone is where one communicator is relaying a message. And then we relay to maybe 15 people. Usually what happens is when it gets to the 15th person, that message is no longer the same as how you received it. Do you understand? So that is our icebreaker, how we're going to do it. I'm the facilitator. I'm going to give her the message. And I said, can you please tell Mr. Basondo to let my mother know that my bicycle broke while on my way home. And then the message will go like that until the end. I assure you, my mother's not going to get the message how I relate it. Maybe it will it will do something with the rims or the chains of the bicycle. And I did not mention that. <laughs> okay. okay. So I'll go on now to introduce the topic by means of a question. I'm asking my audience, what do you think happened to the communication? What went wrong? Then people will answer me, um, there was a communication breakdown. Um, the other person did not listen well. They did not hear exactly what you said, and so on. And then, with the no, um, we decided that we're going to do a pretest and a PowerPoint presentation. Can you explain with a pretest? Okay, uh, I'm Itumile Masonda. So with the pretest, what we're going to do is before, because we've introduced the topic, they know that we are talking about communication, then we're going to issue uh, a mini test, a written test. What is communication? What are bad barriers involved in communication? What do, what do you understand about process? Just a mini test, five minutes, very fast. And then after they write that, we collect the papers and then we continue with the slide. Then during the presentation, they'll be able to know what they knew and know what they're learning. Basically. Okay, so we get that, right? Now we get to the B. Um, we're going to ask a question about the feelings regarding the lost message. So number one, we, we're going to ask the first person who relayed the message. How do you feel knowing that your message was lost on the way and the last person did not get the message how they received it? We're also going to ask the last person who got the message, how did you feel when you know that you got the wrong message? That will be my mother. And then the do, all right, we decided that we are going to focus on the written communication and do a simulation. 
simulation. So on our simulation, we're going to give you a question paper with 10 questions. And the instructions on the question paper, it will say, read all the questions and then answer the following. But question number 10 is an instruction. Do not write anything on your answer sheet, just your name and say name. So that shows that we don't really follow instructions, even with the, with the, with the written communication, we are too quick to answer. I assure you those answer sheets, when we receive them, they'll be having all those answers. Then when you get to question 10, it's boom. You failed the test because you did not read all the questions before you answered. And then number four, when it comes to applying, um, we decided when we apply, we're going to give our audience, our, less, our learners, the work-related scenarios. And they should work in groups to discuss and present, for example. Yeah, so I think this was the, the most tricky one. So for application, we'll be present, we'll give them test uh, scenarios and then those scenarios will have examples that are relevant at their workplace so and then they will have to sit in groups like we are now and then solve the problem presented in the scenarios what could be done better what could be changed and how we can we can improve so that's how they will be will be in fostering the application okay Thank you so much. Let's give them a round of applause. And also well done on co-facilitation. You shared the workload. So well done. Um, I'm going to now go to an online group for feedback for the second one. And I want to get in, um, a voice into the, the session that hasn't been heard before. So I'm going to ask Hassani. Zita, to please give us the, the plan that your group worked on. And you should be able to share your screen. And when you're ready, you can please proceed. Uh, thank you very much and good afternoon. We are not able to share the screen because of the limitations within the technology space but we are able to we can be able to present if it's uh, it's allowed please go ahead okay thank you very much what we what we did colleagues it's uh, in terms of the icebreaker we just put together a, 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 a statement that we wanted our 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 learners to put together in terms of finishing it, completing it. It says Johnny's mother has got uh, three children. It's April, May, and, and we expected them to complete uh, the third name of the child and it worked wonders for us. Some of us were saying the third one is June, but the answer is in the statement there, it's Johnny. And we felt that one we have uh, would have made them feel comfortable and relaxed. With regard to the introduction to the topic, we looked at uh, uh, the output or the input and the output and the conversion of the two in terms of making sure that uh, our, our learners do understand what is it that we, we are talking to to introduce the topic. With regard to the knowledge let me say the no which is knowledge theory we we try to look at what the things that we're going to be taking them through on the it will be the types of communication the barrier of communication and also the seven c's to communication with regard to the b which is emotional intelligence we uh, looked at verbal and nonverbal communication 
where we'll be focusing much time for the learners to understand what is it that's involved when you talk about verbal and nonverbal communication, because this is one of the critical variables which they will, they are, they will be confronted uh, with in their uh, daily work environment, also at a personal level. In terms of the do part, which is the experiential learning and, uh, and also simulation, we felt we'll play a video that will demonstrate uh, the good part of communication and also the bad part of communication. After we've done such a presentation, we'll allow all of them within the, the, the class to be able to have a discussion, a conversation in terms of what is it that they make out of the two videos that they have been played that will be in an interactive mode anyway, the whole session will be interactive in its nature. In terms of apply, which is uptake in workplace, here we'll be expecting that out of the, the, the whole session of the class, there is an expectation that our learners will be able to, to demonstrate the application of what they have been taken through in their, in their workplace. When you talk about demonstrating what we have been uh, taught at work, in this case, if it's communication, this is about your report writing skills, which will have been improved, as well as also your, 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 your saving of uh, meeting, uh, 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 notice of meetings, and also or your agenda. Uh, that is the application part and also the, the impact. With regard to the summary colleagues, that's just simply on the reflection of what we have been, uh, our, our learners have been exposed to. We're starting from the introduction back to the application, but more importantly, it's that the, 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 as a result of the intervention that we have applied, uh, our learners will be able to improve their communication skills back in their work environment. And the other aspect that we looked at, because this is a communication plan, clearly it should be time bound. One should be able to understand what are the time allocations to each and every section. And in terms of icebreaker, we put 15 minutes because it's interactive. When we go to the introduction, we put 15 minutes as well. When we go to theory, because we looked at the amount of work that's involved there, also it's interactive. There is 30 minutes that we have allocated there. Uh, when it comes to B also, we put 30 minutes. The do part, we allocated 30 minutes. The apply, we allocated 30 minutes. The summary is 30 minutes. Remember why we allocated 30 minutes to summary. Also here, we expect to have this section be interactive as well. In the nutshell, that's what we did. And also you'll bear with us. We did this in a virtual platform. We're not able to see facial expression of one of each other, but we rely on the voice that we receive. Facilitator and colleagues, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Round of applause. Well done to that group. Thank you so much for reflecting on that and well done in terms of thinking about the time implication and allocation as well. I'm going to take uh, one more group from the floor. So I have one here in front. Oh, sorry, I, okay, please go ahead. Thank uh, you. Good day, colleagues, I'm from the floor. Uh, with the icebreaker, we are the same with the first group that presented. We used also the broken telephone. This is an icebreaker that will be initiated by the facilitator, whispering to one participant who will share that sentence to the next person. It will rotate up until the last person. The last person in class will be the one that shares that statement to the larger group. And that's where we will see the distortion of that message. In the introduction of the topic, we are going to start with that reflection of an icebreaker. Then we ask also the participant to explain what is communication 
in their own understanding. Then that will set a tone for us as facilitators to know the level of the participant in terms of them knowing what really communication entails. And with the know, we are looking at the knowledge, theory and context. We'll have a slide that, that talks about communication. Remember on the introduction, we asked the participant, now we give what theory says about communication, integrating to what the participant has said from the introduction of the topic. So that integration will also allow us to look at the context where we are going to look at the topics like the barriers to effective communication and also communication channels and processes. Then on the B, we are going to introduce a topic of giving and receiving feedback because that's the topic that is able to tap out the emotional intelligence, the feelings. And on that topic, we'll also have a reflection. And on that reflection, we have questions that we're going to ask the participants. How did they feel to be listened to? And how did they feel when they received a constructive feedback? So that's other bees. Thank you. And on the do, there are two activities that we are going to do. And we'll show a video on effective communication. It's a video that is available for, for all the participants to watch, which takes about 15 minutes. And we'll also do a role play. So each group will receive a case study in terms of the scenarios that are happening in the workplace, in terms of communication, then they are going to talk about that. They will have also the observers who will be observing how communication went. And those observers will give us feedback in terms of how communication went. And on the apply, we are going to have a group work here. On group work, we are going to look at each groups where they're going to be reflecting on uh, their communication channel within the department. And we want them to identify what are the challenges that they are faced in terms of their communication channel. And once they have identified that, then they must also be able to tell us what can be done to change the current status quo in terms of that communication channel, because we want the root cause and also the, the, the solutions to that problem. And in summary, we are going to use a storytelling when we summarize and consolidate this learning of which my colleague is going to share the story that will be sharing with the participant and my other colleague will close up in terms of what they will have learned. Can we keep it concise, please? Just very short. I'll try to be very short. My name is Bongani. Uh, what we discuss is that uh, the important part of communication is feedback. That is letting, know, letting the, 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 the sender know what you have said is clearly understood. Now they say, we decided to tell a story of a parable of a, a lady who's going to Devon, who is supposed to take medication after three hours. Now the granddaughter tells the old lady that uh, now, Gogo, when the bus passes Monroe's, please take your medication. Now the old lady sleeps, the bus passes Monroe's, the bus is at Tugela Plaza now, now the old lady wakes up and goes to the driver and say, driver, are we at Montrose or not? The driver said, no, we passed Montrose. And the driver turns back the bus to Montrose. And then they go back to Montrose. Now we say, Coco, we are at Montrose now. The Coco say, I'm happy, my boy. I can now take my medication. 
That's communication. That's what we said, that sometimes it can lead to confusion if you don't ask what is actually happening or is clearly understood. That's how we did it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. In conclusion, John Maxwell says, communication fuels exchange. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you so much. Um, I know that we're almost at lunchtime, but I just want to get one more online voice into the room. Matolo Dana, I, you've been very patiently having your hand up. So I'm going to ask you to please take us um, through the being, doing, and applying part of the plan that you've made, please. Okay. Oh, hi, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to give feedback on this. Um, all right, on the B part, uh, we said that we would look at, uh, we we'll would talk about how do we handle getting feedback and how do we give feedback as well? And how do we communicate to, uh, to get, in order to get the desired impact or desired results? So that is what we will be discussing with the, uh, with a class according to our plan and then the do part we said that we would ask them to design a flyer and also we have three different activities that we we, we agreed on and then the second one is to put them in groups to discuss and ask them to capture uh, the non-verbal cues in their interaction as well and then share that with the bigger group when they come back from their groups and then the third one would be to show them a video or an article and ask them to decode what they are seeing in the in the video and the article. Then they discuss that in the groups and then also we discuss it in the bigger group. And then on the apply. Sure, okay. Sorry, I just got a, saw a message now, Zoom message, I'm not sure what it's about. On the apply, we said that we would discuss briefly, for example, on issues of uh, uh, just to give them some tips or that they must be observant with what they are saying and the actions and their body language when they go back and because it determines the feedback that one gets and how do the people experience you. So one must always be conscious of that. And also it's important to control how to communicate feedback, control how you present yourself so that you can get the, the feedback that you desire. Also demonstrate to your to the people, the audience uh, that you have at any particular point that you are listening to them and you are hearing them. And that you are listening with understanding, not with the purpose of giving feedback. And also in choosing your communication strategy, you should always make sure that you do that with your audience in mind. So those are the tips that we agree that would give them to go back and apply in the workplace. Thank you. Thank you so much. Round of applause to everyone, to yourselves and all the people in the room and on the virtual platform. Well done. Well done. I trust that you have been exposed to uh, the art of facilitation, actually the hard work that goes into planning for a session. Uh, I'm going to believe that I've given you just a little bit of pointers in terms of what you need to keep in mind, what you need to think about. I believe you've also experienced how painful it sometimes is to prepare for a session um, and that it often takes twice as long to prepare for the session as it is to deliver the session. Um, and um, I hope that what has landed for you is that there's knowing, being, doing, and applying, and we can do that in a consolidated and incorporated way, but we actually need to think about all of those elements. Um, I thank you for your patience. I thank you for your participation. It was such a privilege spending the morning with you. I'm going to hand to our program director to just uh, do the closure of the session and the lunch arrangements. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can we give a big round of applause to Soraya?
So Raya, thank you for teaching about the no, be, do, and the baby that has just been added to it now. The applic apply. Thank you very much for that. Colleagues, uh, I hope you have learned as much as I have. At the moment, we will be breaking for lunch. Please remember um, the ones with the green dots, uh, where you ate yesterday, actually, that is the same arrangement that is going to happen this afternoon. So I request that you put on some roller skates as you go out to eat so that at half past two on the dot, we start. So meaning that wherever that you will be at 25 past two, please start walking towards the hall so that we can start promptly at half past two as our next speaker needs to leave by three o'clock. So we need to give him enough time. I humbly request that we come back on time. And to the colleagues who are joining us virtually, this is time now for you to go to your kitchen and defrost your lunch and bon appetit to all of you. See you at half past two. Thank you. My colleagues, please, can you make sure that you assist me at 25 past two, good given, just to remind people to come back, please. Thank you very much. Bon appetit, enjoy your lunch. <laughs> Makes big regret. Harry's utterly ashamed about Meghan's prank on Ellen show and fed up toxic marriage. Prince Harry is allegedly embarrassed by what his wife, Meghan Markle, did when she appeared in the Ellen show. In its December 29th issue, Woman's Day claimed that Prince Harry didn't want Markle to do, but he didn't also know how to stop her. After all, the Duchess of Sussex thought that it would be beneficial for her to show the public her cheeky and funny side. Unfortunately, her attempts backfired because more... Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Moses Jacobs. I work for the Office of the Premier in the Northern Cape in HRD. We had a very wonderful and fruitful and engaging two days of the PSTF Peer Learning Seminar. I take a few lessons uh, for myself from this seminar. Firstly, the whole question of professionalism and ethical conduct, which for me was a very, very important subject which was covered in the seminar. Given uh, the situation which we are in in our country, with regard to corruption and unethical conduct, which is well covered in our media. So it was an eye for many of us I would hope. Precisely the fact that for us to always remember that uh, it always starts with you as an individual. You are able to decide whether you want to be part of the problem or part of the solution. I also learned about how public management affected the operations of government. We had the case study of the National School of Government, wherein they tried to research and, and to establish what was the more public things and how they had to and how they had to reorganize themselves as an institution so that they continue to function under this new normal. The whole concept of uh, remote working, which was a novelty to most of us, as uh, we have always been used to being at work from eight to half past four. Now with COVID, there was a novelty where we still had to do certain responsibilities, but were unable to come to the office due to the lockdown, hence the concept of remote learning. Those are some of the issues which are, I think were very important for the seminar and which I take home with me. Thank you very much. Um, hello colleagues, my name is Faith Chabalala and I work for the Department of Education um, in the HRD unit. I am so excited and so pleased to be here today for the two-day workshop. Um, for me the experience was quite overwhelming, I enjoyed every moment and I really learned a lot. Um, I loved how collaborative and how well organized the two-day event was. For me, the thing that I will take away is really um, the topic that we had about ethical behavior in our departments and organizations and in government as general. I think it is really a topic that is 
still something that we have to endeavor into and we need to check how we behave in our departments and how we treat our clients, how we treat ourselves and how we actually just portray ourselves in our organizations. So this was really um, an overwhelming session and I really learned a lot and I hope I can have the same experience next year as well. My name is Bradley Dirks uh, from the Department of Education and uh, I was part of this uh, session with the NSG and uh, I must say it was a uh, fruitful and a very rejuvenating session for public servants, especially in the Northern Cape. I think what was more exciting was the presentation on the attempt by government to formalize the public sector, which I think will help to streamline the outputs and impact of our activities and ensure that it restricts uh, activities within government that contribute to the degeneration of the public sector. Added to that, I think also it stimulated the mindsets of the participants, especially in the training and development unit, especially in this province, to redirect their attentions on why the purpose of training and development is there. And I think as we come back probably in the next year, we should be seeing a different assessment of activities of the province. Um, hi, um, I'm Sabina Hassan from Department of Health, Western Cape Province. Um, I attended the LSG uh, um, forum, the PSDLA forum, and it was quite interactive and I enjoyed every minute of it. I've learned a lot. Um, the highlights for me was when LSG started, the, when they opened up to say, um, you know, they need to change because of the of the um, pandemic, the COVID pandemic that um, happened, and they immediately um, need to see how they can change, and and we all had they have to move to the digital um, platform, and um, yeah, so technology is where we're going at, and and we have to learn um, the way we we do business. So, so that for us was something um, we know we all have to learn, reskilling ourselves, upskilling ourselves. And like the one lady said in the conference, you know, we need to go back to the drawing board and, and learning from the, you know, from the Excel, your platform, all those things. And, and that was so standing out for me and also working from home. We management have to, you know, communication, that is now actually very important for us. Um, is that communication when you work from home, how to adapt and also be ethical. Like we, we said in our group, the ethical, the behavior, and also, um, you know, be positive. Although all this negativity is happening in the COVID and all that, but also what can you bring um, to, to make that change and be positive and, and, and try to live in that uh, platform. And that is what, uh, what I've learned, just to be positive. Although there's a lot of negativity, but just be positive and things will change. And just upskilling yourself at all times, education is important for us to go for. I'm Frida Yodon. I'm from the Department of the Premier, Western Cape Government and we've just attended the Public Service Trainers Forum and I am very excited after attending the, the sessions. I must say the topics were very relevant and I really learned quite a bit from the topics looking at the professionalization of the public servants, um, specifically looking at becoming more innovative, more creative, more agile, I think one of the things that would stay with me is when we looked at the uh, new organization and that agility doesn't mean bouncing back, as a lot of us probably thought, but also actually jumping forward. Adapting to change, I think the pandemic that we have faced over the past few months, actually it's more than months, it's a year and a half now, um, has really taught us 
to be agile and to ad adjust to new situations. I also think that talking about the new world of work, looking at working from home, looking at working differently, um, looking at the skills required for that, um, and committing to upskilling, reskilling, and staying relevant in the current and changing environment that we are finding ourselves in it was very relevant topics for me and I must say I learned a lot and enjoyed the interaction and networking with everybody in our environment. So thank you very much. My name is Zanele Mkyoko from the Department of Local Government in the Western Cape. I've recently attended the Public Sector Trainers Forum in the Western Cape. And I am so excited and it has helped to rekindle my passion for skills development. And uh, the structure of the program spoke to the relevant issues that we suffer because of the pandemic. And now we have been reignited to go out there and advise on what programs can we do to make sure that the citizens of the country are upskilled, the citizens of this country are actually participating in the economy. Um, what stood out for me is when um, the principal of the National School of Government spoke about the ability to serve a different um, calibre of uh, clients and citizens and in the fact that we have to ensure equality in the way that we serve our citizens. And that has helped me to realise that it is important that we treat people with respect and it is important that we set the standard and the bar so high because he mentioned something like we will have people from different categories of the society and we need to be able to serve those citizens. Um, I think also the program was um, aligned to the vision of the Western Cape province where we have our vision inspired priorities which talks about innovation and culture, talks about growth and jobs. So it is aligned to what we are seeking to do as the province and the slogan of the province, which is the Western Cape Government for you. So I'd like to thank the National School of Government so much for this um, uh, uh, program because it has helped us to re-look at our passion and to re-look at strategies and insights that we are going to use to be able to capacitate our organizations. Thank you so much. My name is Matlasi from Gauteng Department of Education. Uh, having attended uh, today's session uh, by the School of Government, uh, building a professional public service, uh, one has learned a lot uh, with the presentation by the principal himself, uh, uh, with various speakers that came in. One of the key issues that was touched by the principal was that uh, we should be able to go back to the source uh, as public servants uh, or the simulator if you choose, if you like, so that uh, we are able to uh, refer back on some of the challenges that are coming up. Looking at the current challenges of COVID, for example, COVID is a new development, so it is required of us as public servants or as HRT practitioners to be able to adapt to the new changes that are affecting the public service in order for us to be able to deliver proper services that are required because of uh, COVID. Like any other emerging strategies, do have an impact in terms of what we do as public servants. So therefore, being a professional public servant allows us to grow within that space so that we are able to recognize the challenges uh, that impact on us in terms of service delivery and uh, some of the things that impact generally on the public servants in terms of their skills and knowledge. Good afternoon, uh, my name is Lawrence Jacobs and I'm the Chief Director in the Gauteng City Region Academy. I want to say from the offset that um, we are indeed grateful to the NSG in collaboration with the European Union in bringing together this peer learning forum exchange seminar. Now, allow me also just to say that it's months later now that we are able, after the President announced that we back to lockdown one, that we are able to come together uh, and share best practices. Um, so in the past it has all been about Zoom, it's been about Teams meetings, 
So it was a bit of an adjustment today standing here. But fortunately the energy pulled it off and we are able to have this exchange with uh, various other people. Let me say that peer learning in particular is very important in terms of professional development. And I referred earlier on to best practices. And today we had the privilege of listening to best practices from other countries. And I want to name one particular uh, country, in particular Namibia, who through the cabinet secretary has been able to share with us some of the good practices that they have within the public service. Uh, having said that, I also need to make reference to the speech made by the principal of the NSG. He uh, was very powerful, was very provocative uh, in, in his address, and certainly gave us all the challenge to start looking at a new cadre that we will be uh, preparing for the next five, ten years. Who are we looking at? Are we ready to have a cadre that will go out there and transform the public servants. Are we still as public servants doing justice to our people? Are we servicing the people out there? Are we doing what is expected of us? So the debates here today are very important for us to move forward as a public service. And hopefully in the future, when the public service gets professionalized, and I'm told it's quite uh, nearby, uh, we will be able to do justice to this noble profession. Afternoon, I am Dimaga Palane from the Office of the Premier, responsible for the provincial coordination in all HRD programs. This is an opportunity for HRD practitioners that are unable to attend conferences, that we share practices and we learn from each other. The highlights for me for this PLE is that it brought a variety of speakers that address issues that we are facing with. Looking at the pandemic and what impact it had on our workplaces is that we don't have policies that guides us on how to perform or how our performance is going to be measured. We learned from the speakers that gave their own experiences and I think we need to learn from that. We shouldn't be waiting for the DPSA to, to, to draft a policy on how to deal with workplaces during COVID-19. Looking at management, I think management needs to play a role in guiding, in leading by example. During COVID-19, we find that people are not uh, coming to work as requested because there is no guideline in what is needed. I think we need more management support in terms of providing the trainers with tools of trade, simple things that people take it for granted, like a laptop, a working laptop. In the, in the country, we've got a challenge of uh, uh, network connection, the SI, the CETA, responsible for the public service, which is SITA. We find that uh, there, is, there is no uh, um, continuous connectivity in terms of providing with net, networks, and we're supposed to work from home. So it makes people who are not giving this tool, this particular tools of trade to come to work and get be exposed uh, for this virus. So I think in the public service, talking in general for the province, in the province, our province is purely rural. You can you imagine a district office in Guiana, district office in Vembe, in Chilizin, you find a training officer that's supposed to work from home, doesn't even have a, a, a working a laptop or, or, or desktop in the office, what about working from home? So I think, we need more to be done because I think the pandemic is here, to, is here to stay and as such we must be able to be innovative. When I say we shouldn't be waiting for any police because people will say this is not in the police. But we have to uh, keep the ground running and work and ensure that we are innovative, we provide 
uh, all the resources and the performance and because if we don't report, then it means in the public service we're not going to do anything. As a provincial coordinator, like I understand there are people who are working from home who have comorbidities, but be, uh, without me having all the resources that I can be able to contact, even people that are, are, not, are, are supposed to work from home, then it means that particular person will never report for the entire financial or as long as COVID is here with us. So I think uh, with these presentations that are posted by the NSG on the PSTF or on the website of the NSG, as the province will encourage uh, our HRD practitioners to go into the website and look at the presentations that we've done. And we continue with conversations and discussions on how can we improve ourselves. Because as, as trainers, we need to be able to ensure that um, we train and we instill the culture of learning. Because like without lifelong learning, there's nothing we can do. And now we've got the e-learning. E-learning has been here and we talked to for a long time, but now this is the reality. We have to ensure that uh, e-learning is here and make people uh, be able to, to source out information, whether it's global, whether it's regional, whether it's domestic, in terms of whatever fields that they want to empower themselves on. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Moleke Masarame. I'm working in the Department of Agriculture, HRD. So, my, I'm here to attend training on human resource, training as HRD, uh, and then this training is being facilitated by Department of the Premier and NSG. Uh, in this training, there are uh, quite a number of things that I've experienced uh, that we had from the, the presentations, and the presentations were, were quite informative and uh, eye-awakening. Uh, the things that uh, captured my, my attention are as follows. First, there was a presentation on ethical behavior uh, for the public servants and uh, the, the challenges that we, we, we have experienced during this period of, of COVID-19. Uh, this COVID-19 has affected uh, the public service immensely. In, 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 yeah, it, it has affected us quite badly as public servants because we, we are not doing or uh, delivering services as, as we are supposed to do. Uh, you will remember that when it started, uh, we had a lockdown where offices were literally closed and then the public did not access our, our, our services. And as such, the, the public suffered uh, because of lack of, of, of services. And uh, especially for public servants, we, we did not go to work. And if we are, we are not at work, it means the work is, ne is, is never done. And then we lately, uh, with, 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 with this COVID, uh, we, we had a, a rotational uh, arrangement that we have done to say on such a day we are, you are going to work, on such a day we don't go to work. And uh, during those days that you are not going to work, you will need to work from home. And so we, we, we were, it, it was highlighted that the, the issue of, of, of working from home is, is here to stay, is going to be with us for quite a number of, of, of for quite some time. And uh, as, as such, if you, you are working from home, it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that you are not performing your tasks. You, you will have to do your work at home. Uh, you, you have to, to work online. 
if 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 you had an opportunity of having of having the the laptop and you are network connected, but in some cases you find that you don't you cannot you cannot do you cannot perform as as expected because you don't have uh, the, the 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 data to to you don't have uh, connectivity and then you are unable to access your 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 clients like SHRD our key responsibility is to train employees and sometimes you you cannot train them because some of your your your, your clients they don't have the laptops so these are the new things that have emerged the new ex uh, uh, challenges that have emerged with covid-19 and uh, but uh, as, 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 as employees, we, we, we are not supposed to, to throw the towel. Uh, what, we, what, what we need to do is to, to, is to work with what, you, what we have. And then if you don't have the, the resources, the little resources that you have, you need to use them to make sure that the training is, is, is being done to, to other employees. So, uh, National School of Government came here to give us the strategies to keep to give us uh, the the, the tech, tech, uh, tech techniques that we can use to make sure that um, we, we we train our 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 people uh, in in the light of, of COVID-19. We should not throw the towel and say there's nothing that we can do. So public servants need to also to in to have a good ethical behavior, good ethical behavior, which means we need to, to be disciplined, uh, we need to work uh, 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 accordingly as per our, our KPI, which is key performance instrument. Uh, so we, we, we really appreciate the intervention that is done by, by National School of Government. And uh, I think now as, 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 as employees, we, we have been, we have been uh, uh, re-energized and also that we need to, to, to re-imagine re, uh, the new ways of, of doing things so that we overcome uh, this, this pandemic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Dina Whitehead. I'm from Office of the Premier. Uh, I'm a new intern from Office of the Premier. I believe that I still have a long way to go, but so far I just want to thank uh, the National School of Government for bringing this opportunity to broaden my mind, to broaden my skills. Uh, what really stood out for me is the presentation that was made by Ms. Kobuzo. She spoke about integrity, he spoke about ethics, and also he touched about uh, sexual harassment. So I believe that as a public servant, you need to have that integrity. You need to have those ethics so that you can represent people, so that people can be open to you and will be able to help them. So I believe this opportunity will make me to learn as time goes on and I will be able to know what, it, what, what is going on in the HRD department and what is it that is expected of me. I just want to thank this opportunity because as we go, we learn, we move. So I'm just excited that I'll be learning a lot more from this internship. Thank you. Wow. I'm Mike Matamera from the Department of Health in Popo. I just want to express my sincere gratitude for bringing this program to Limpopo province. Uh, I could not ask for more. I've attended a lot of programs in my life, both within South Africa and outside South Africa. And believe you me, this is one of the best programs I've attended. And thank you for the NSG who brought a top cream de la cream of facilitators and you know if you don't know that you do not know you are a problem to yourself and the world at large today it's really an eye-opening exercise and i must say from what i have learned i am going to go places i will see faces and there will be no cases <laughs> And I want to say this, 
from the bottom of my heart before I retire. This program has inspired and motivated me. Indeed, change begins with me. Please visit me in the next few months. You will see what I have learned. It is all about going to apply and living what I have learned. And thank you very much. Good afternoon, uh, my name is Toby Aigali Diane. I'm from the Department of Community Safety and Transport Management. Um, I would like to appreciate um, the um, uh, NSG together with Office of the Premier for arranging this session for the trainers within the province. What I can just um, share is um, one of the things that I have appreciated mainly from the presentations is issues that talk to the changes that are brought by COVID-19 on how we are um, expected to work our current, the new norm, um, to say some of the challenges that we are experiencing as departments, really um, um, some of the uh, same challenges that are experienced by other departments. But um, what is also um, um, the presentation that I appreciated was from, I think it was UNISA, where they talked about um, how they are progressing with e-learning I think it's something that we can still implement as the department because it is now difficult to have uh, people converge in um, one venue. Uh, what we need to still do is to develop a policy on um, e-learning. Um, we also talked about um, the ethical conduct of uh, public servants, which I think is also key. Um, what I also appreciate is the issue um, that talks to um, ensuring that as public servants we conduct ourselves in an ethical manner so that we represent uh, government well. Um, what I still look forward is um, the representation of women at SMS level, which I think as the province we are still uh, sort of lagging behind in terms of reaching that 50% uh, target. But we hope that uh, going forward, we'll manage to achieve um, those targets. Um, yes, I just want to end it there that we have learned a lot from the session and I would encourage others to really take the opportunity when it's presented to also come and learn and learn from other um, departments, from other uh, presenters uh, who would then share that valuable information with us. Thank you. My name is Kihomudi Tuemiti Amiri. I'm from the Northwest Provincial Treasury. I'm the Assistant Director for Internships and Learnerships. Um, with this two days training or workshop, my highlights, uh, if I could point out a few, there was a presentation that was done about navigating the COVID-19 pandemic by Mr. Mervyn. And there was also one on uh, working from home. Uh, what I can say is that um, as HRD practitioners, we are facing a lot of challenges, especially through this pandemic, whereby we we are living in the new normal. So we are not doing things the way we used to do, whereby we were working from the office and uh, most of us, the resources are in the offices. So what um, the departments now need to do is to give us the resources that we'll be able to use from home. For instance, um, the laptops, we need laptops to be able to work from home, we need uh, modems to connect so that at any given time we are able to respond to anything that comes up when we are from home. We also need to equip um, our employees with uh, using technology. 
because now we uh, people cannot be going on face-to-face -face sessions and we cannot say that we are waiting for the pandemic to end so that we can take people on training uh, even if we are living under the new normal uh, services has to be rendered that's the basic because we are working for government so for our employees to be able to continue uh, getting those skills that they need we as HRD people need to make sure that they continue attending trainings and unfortunately they cannot uh, go on face-to-face -face session so we need to have uh, resources in place for example our computer labs have to be equipped so that at least when there's a training that needs to happen they can go into a computer lab and they can attend online trainings we also need to make sure that they are equipped in in, in using technology uh, there's this thing called bbt born before technology so most of the people cannot use technology so we have to make sure that they are compliant and complacent with using technology so that it, it becomes easier for them to be able to attend those trainings because at the moment most of the employees refuse to go on training because they are not familiar with the technology they are fearing that okay how am i going to cope with online training if somebody is in johannesburg or in pretoria or wherever then i'm in my thinking i have to attend training what exactly am i going to do so now we need to firstly bridge that gap of technology for them to be able to comfortably be able to attend to training in their own uh, space. Um, the other thing that I can say uh, I took from this uh, workshop is professionalizing uh, training. So we don't we, we need to move from the old way of doing things and making this a, a profession not just a, a passing by thing. In most departments, they, they, HRD is, is, is uh, they take HRD as just one of those things. So, for instance, if budgets have to be cut, the first unit is obviously HRD. And when people are not performing, they come back to us again to say that, but why are you not guys taking people on training? Forgetting that we didn't have the funds to take people on training. Um, okay, fortunately in our department, we've got supportive, uh, our senior manager is very supportive. She has made sure that uh, issues of uh, HR and HRD are part of their standing item in their, in, in their executive meetings. So at least she can every now and then present those issues in their meetings but in most of the departments it's not the case but if we uh, maybe in the province that is standardized that uh, HRD is uh, prioritized it will make things easier for us uh, HRD practitioners to be able to perform our job thank you yeah, my name is Aubrey Khabo. Uh, I'm from the Department of Finance in Northwest Province. I'm in HRD unit. And then uh, today I've been attending, in fact, for the past two days, I've been attending uh, a peer learning group. I think what uh, the highlights of the program is that uh, uh, what I've learned is that uh, one has noticed that the uh, constant, is, uh, I mean, change is constant and uh, very, very much permanent. So given the situation, the current situation where we are in as a country, especially regarding the, the COVID-19, I think uh, the NSG came up with uh, these programs whereby we ought to deliberate, discuss, you know, and understand and learn from other people how do they cope and go about, you know, addressing their HRD or even government uh, programs uh, under this current situation. Uh, one has learned that uh, we need to start you know, looking, you know, uh, addressing issues rather than to wait 
uh, whereby uh, we need to be given instructions that we should do A or we should do B, but there are other issues where as an employee of, in the government, one needs to, to start initiate, initiate things. And then from there, uh, given the, the, the COVID-19, I think we are having a lot and lot of challenges now.
colleagues, good afternoon. Can I ask you to settle down, please? Those that are still outside, may I ask you please to walk, make your way into the plenary hall. Dr. Maja, please make your way to the main table, Dr. Maja, if you can hear me. Colleagues, may I ask you to start uh, taking your seats? And let us start welcoming back the colleagues who are at home, who are in the office. Please let's settle down. Uh, but I give Dr. Majamon Temo, please, if you can just drag him in, please. We are a minute away from half past two. I promise that we're going to start at half past two on the dot. So if I can ask people just to walk back into the hall and take their seats. It is half past two on the dot. And I did mention that we are going to start at half past two so that we can continue with the last part of our program. Okay, colleagues, thank you very much for being punctual. I hope you have enjoyed your lunch as much as I have. Uh, Given, thank you very much for being my other hand and ensuring that people come back on time. I see a lot of empty seats as usual. I think we have lost some people who need to take flights back home, but nevertheless, we, we continue. Um, I'm going to welcome the colleagues who are joining us virtually. And I hope you have also enjoyed your lunch. I hope it was worth the wait and, and um, you are well nourished and you are ready to go. Our speaker for the afternoon has arrived, but I see he had to dash out quickly. So I will make a few announcements while I'm waiting for Prof to come back. Uh, please note that if you have registered, whether you are here or you are in the office, you're joining us virtually, you will be receiving a link where you will need to give us feedback about the proceedings of the two days. You will also receive um, PDF, of all the presentations that were made over the past two days. You will also receive a YouTube link where you will be able to, you know, uh, get um, to understand exactly what we were doing. You can even use that when you are doing your own facilitation. So those are the two things that you will be receiving. But please make sure that you had registered and we have your, your, your email address, okay? Then those are the two, and please remember colleagues, I asked a question earlier in the day, if anyone can guess what kind of dance that um, Surya does is going to get a gift from me. Not the people who work for the NSG, sorry ma'am, you are disqualified. Sorry, say again. Pole dancing, no, that is not correct. Anyone else? I see there's a lady there at the back, belly dancing. Please let's give her a round of applause. So, so you, can, you can come closer to me to, to get your gift, please. The DDG thought I was giving away the organization's laptop. Ma'am, you got it right. Soraya does belly dancing. Thank you. Thank you. Compliments from the NSG. Thank you. Thank you very much, colleagues. Our guest is here, Professor Masirumule. He is the chief editor of the Journal, Journal of Public Administration, Professor of Public Affairs and Executive Dean, of the Faculty of Humanities at the Swan University of Technology. He has more than 50 publications to his name and has supervised 20 masters 
and seven doctoral students successfully. Probably some of these students are in here. He has presented more than 40 papers in national and international conferences. He undertook various strategic assignments for the country, which among others include being part of the team that reviewed a single public service bill for the Ministry of Public Service and Administration. He did policy research on the place of state-owned enterprises in the developmental state for the Presidential Review Committee on SOEs. He was part of the expert reference group for the Presidential Remuneration Review Committee, and he is currently leading a ministerial task team on the professionalization of the public service. That is what he will be talking to us about, the professionalization of the public service. Ladies and gentlemen, let us put our hands together for Professor Maserumule. Prof, over to you. Thank you. Colleagues, uh, good afternoon. Um, I am glad to be here. I'm glad to be in your company. And I just want to start by thanking you for being here. I know that uh, it's normally, uh, we are normally in what we call the graveyard session. And uh, I could see that you're still here. Um, thank you very much, um, uh, program director. And also I see my colleagues from National School of um, um, uh, government, uh, Dr. Maja, um, um, Soria, and um, uh, Dr. Malachi. Uh, these are my colleagues. Um, thank you so much. It's good that uh, we could uh, today meet and interact in person. We have, we have interacted so much, but virtually. Um, let me also once more say thank you for inviting us to the 22nd Public um, uh, Sector Trainers Forum Conference. And I'm glad that if you check your program, <clears throat> the, to the topic that was put before us, fortunately, uh, does not put us in an awkward uh, position of being expected to talk about the recommendation of the ministerial task team on the professionalization of the public service because the report is yet to be finalized and presented to the minister. <clears throat> and therefore, we are not really going to talk about what we are recommending as the ministerial task team. Instead, we came here <clears throat> with the approach of sharing some insight on the implication of professionalizing the public service on your role as a trainer. Um, and, and also we came here with the approach of uh, looking you know, at this uh, conference as part of the interaction of as part of the broader discourse, which the framework has generated, and also as training practitioners. I, I hope that uh, we all had an opportunity to study the contents of, of the framework, because you could also, if you did, immediately get a sense that if this is what the framework says, the likelihood of the role that I might play in future is this and this and this. I must also indicate that as the organization of more than 1,000 training practitioners across all the sphere of, of, of government, this forum is the most appropriate platform for discussive engagement on professionalizing the public service. As trainers in the public service, 
you are the pivots upon which the success of the professionalization uh, as proposed in the framework depends. <clears throat> because if you read it closely, the role of a trainer is writ large because it, it appears in almost all the key aspects that frame the model itself, the model of professionalization as proposed by the framework. <clears throat> and I'm not surprised because this ought to be as training coupled with education is key in strengthening talent and human capital formation efforts to enhance the capacity of the state. Training shapes the character of the public service. It is one of the key enablers <coughs> of professionalization. And it is important in creating that human capability <coughs> for a capable, ethical, and developmental state. If you look at the medium term strategic framework, 2019-2024, you'll realize that the notion of a capable developmental state is emphasized as one of the foremost priority. And the intention is to respond to the national development plan about building state capacity to intervene, support, guide development so that the dividends of democracy could accrue across society, especially to the poor. A key feature of state capacity is its capability, which while in turn creating capability within the state is indeed the function of professionalizing the public service. In other words, when we talk about professionalizing the public service, we are talking about building state capability. Professionalizing the public service, ladies and gentlemen, in simple terms means to have in the employee of the state qualified employees who know what they are doing, fully equipped to perform a public function conscientiously. We are talking about those whose value orientation is steeped in what we all know about the value principle. And I insist that when we talk about vertebrate principle, we should always understand them as an integral part of the African philosophy of who we are, the African philosophy of humanism, right? And also, when we talk about prof uh, professionalizing the, the public service, we are talking about those who embody in their conduct of public affairs, the basic values and principles of public administration as enshrined in chapter 10 of the constitution of the Republic of South Africa. Your role as a trainer, is key in contributing towards making the public service a profession with a career system based on the merit principle where recruitment, appointment, promotions are fair and impartial. This is what the professionalization of the public service seeks to achieve, including more importantly, making the public service a career of choice through employee value proposition. The role that we are doing is critically important in the sense that it creates 
an opportunity for those who are in the employ of the state or those who aspire to be in the employ of the state to be professionals. We cannot talk about professionalization without you. I'm saying all this to underscore the importance of the role that we are playing in the professionalization of the public service, where the objective is to inst institutionalize the capability of the state. However, for a training to make a significant contribution in the professionalization of the public service, it must itself be institutionalized as a profession. And the opportunity for this exists. Perhaps, ladies and gentlemen, we could take an advantage of the fact that we could manage to organize ourselves into a forum like this and use it as a platform to define competencies and standards required for certification of a trainer in the public sector. And this will include prescription related to the level at which a trainer should be schooled in state craft and portfolio of evidence showing training in pedagogy. And this is what the task of building state capacity by professionalizing the public service requires. Our roles as trainers need to be reimagined where the emphasis should be on becoming continuous learners ourselves as trainers to keep refilling the wellspring of new ideas. In other words, as the training fraternity, we require new orientation an approach to professional and human capability building, where ideation should become a prominent feature in our instructional interaction between a trainer and trainees. This means beyond mastering the art of facilitating a trainer should always be at the cutting edge of the subject that the trainees are trained on. In other words, teachers of public servants should know how to teach and, should, and, and, and they should equally be granted in the subject matter of their teaching or trainings. As I say this, I got reminded of some situation that at some point I got involved in, which clearly illuminates the point that I'm trying to make here. <laughs> at some point, I got called to rush to a training venue where training was supposed to be taking place. I was told that there was a problem. I got there and I asked the participants what the problem was. And the answer was, <laughs> the problem is with the facilitator. And I said that, but what about the facilitators? And this is what the, the participants said. They said, he raised the slides for us instead of engaging in the ideas projected in his slides. And the facilitators could not therefore live up to the expectation of the part participants because he was was not grounded in the subject that he was training on. Being knowledgeable in the subject matter is important to enhance our pedagogical prowess for impactful training intervention to create capability with, within the state, especially as the complexity of managing public affairs requires innovation agility. In other words, application of creativity to optimize the delivery of the public good. Let me also 
share with you what I think should be the orientation of our training intervention for building the capacity of the state based on insights from trends in the discipline. Let me start by referring to the concept of the public good, which I referred to earlier. Um, there is, there is uh, this American, uh, British professor, Ian McLean, is a professor of politics at Oxford University. When I come across the concept of public good, I often refer to him, the intention being to try to explain what it means. And this is what Ian McLean said. A public good, I quote, a public good refers to any good that, and you must listen very carefully, the public good refers to any good that, if supplied to anybody, is necessarily supplied to everybody, and from whose benefits it is impossible or impracticable to exclude anybody, close quote. This is a very beautiful theoretical construct, which if you had listened to it closely, at its core is the notion of social justice. And it resonates with the African philosophy of humanism and should therefore be the centering of the episteme of statecraft, which training practitioners like you should internalize to shape your training approaches and interventions. In other words, as you, in, as you interact with your, your trainees, you must always have this thing of saying that at the end of the day, these people ought to understand that they are here to provide the public good. Of equally importance, and this is, this is what I am actually proposing to you, is that of equally importance, in addition to the mastery of the act of facilitation, is for you to always be at the, forefront, at the forefront of ideas, shaping statecraft beyond the neoliberal prescription of what we have always been referring to as the new public management. Hmm? Remember at some point, there was this thing of saying that government should be run like a business. That's, 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 that's the new liberal prescription where the emphasis was on maximizing outputs with minimum input cost, including commodification of the public good, right? And all these were emphasized as part some of the key imperatives of public service reform. For at least more than three decades, the new public management had become a template for reform, shaping the modules, sequencing of academic curricula, including our own training interventions, where students and public servants were told that, were taught that answers to administrative challenges were to be found in institutional economics and business principles rather than public policies. Towards the end of the 20th century, the new public management became heavily criticized for its strong focus on what we call the virtues of three E's, that is economy efficiency and effectiveness, but disregarding social equity and democratic values. Such criticism, which has been very consistent for more than 15 years in rejecting 
the new public management as the fundamental pedagogy of big lies has created a pattern of thought which underscore social equity, democratic values, and organizational humanism as important conceptual frames for reimagining public sector reforms, where government has regained control over public service provisions and citizens have become citizens, not customers. There is a very interesting book that I want you to also, if you have time, go through it. It is titled, New Public Service, Saving Not Staring. This book explains the knowledge and competencies required to build state capacity. It was authored by Janet and Robert and Hart. And these two are making a very important point, which in many ways sum, sums up the thinking that had become to supplant the new public management logic on state craft. And I find it critically important in reimagining training interventions. And this is what Den Hart and Den Hart said in their book. I quote, government should not be run like a business, but it should be run like a democracy, close quote. And they put forward seven principles on how to go about this. The first principle is that public service should serve citizens, not customs. The second principle is that public service should exist for public interest. The third principle is that public service should value citizenship. The fourth principle is that public service should always think strategically and act democratically. The, the fifth principle is that public service should always be accountable, but it should always take into account that accountability is not simple. The sixth one, public service should serve rather than steer. The seventh one, public service should value people, not just productivity. These are the seven principles which uh, then art and then art are actually proposing in their book. Looking closely at all these principles, their coherence with the basic values and principle of public administration as enshrined in the constitution of the Republic of South Africa, including the virtue bill principles as promulgated in the white paper on transforming, on transforming public service in 1997 is clear. They give meaning to governance beyond the economic reductionism of efficiency and outputs, where emphasis is on what we call social effectiveness. And this is about satisfying all aspects of human life. This is about a public service which is committed to the public interest. I'm throwing all this ladies and gentlemen, to perhaps spark a reflection on the curriculum of our academic programs and training interventions related to state craft. And I'm not only talking to you, I'm also talking to universities. In other ways, the question that we need to ask ourselves as trainers, as people that are attached to universities, as teachers in the field of public affairs, the question that we need to ask ourselves is, do the programs that we offer reflect the existing body of thought, which many have started to characterize it as the post new public management paradigm? I'm asking this question because professionalization of the public uh, uh, service compel us to indeed ask the question, because for us to, uh, to succeed in our endeavors to build the capacity of the state, 
we must always make sure that we embrace new thinking. As I move towards wrapping up, I'm not so sure, hey, uh, Dr. Maja, what are we going to do with the concept of a customer, which in the white paper on transforming a, a public service is used to explain Vatubelo principle? Because the current thinking says that citizens are citizens are not customers. And also, as I indicated earlier, the adage of our Tobelo principle represent an important value orientation based on the African philosophy of humanism. And as I interact with the Tobelo principle, I often ask the question, how can a neoliberal concept of a customer be used to explain an important aspect of African philosophy of humanism as Vatopele? Imagine thinking in the field is that citizens are citizens, not customers. These are just my thoughts. I don't know what you are saying. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. Ladies and gentlemen, can we give Prof a big round of applause, please? Prof, thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you for what you have shared with us. You know, a couple of years ago, in a different forum, when I got to meet Prof, two words that I learned out of the presentation that he was doing on that day. He spoke a lot about pedagogy and andragogy. And at the time I didn't know what they meant. And I thought, but why, why is this man using such big words? Only when I Googled the words afterwards, did I realize the relevance of what he was presenting about at the time. So I hope you have learned one or two things out of what he has shared with us. Um, he shared with us about professionalization. He spoke a lot about the Batupili principles and that is something that we know, something that we're supposed to leave and sometimes we forget about Batupele principles. He spoke about African philosophy of who we are. As trainers, as public servants, these are the things that we need to carry with us and always remember. He said that a role of a trainer is key in contributing to a public service that is based on a meritocratic system, which is something that we are working towards. So Prof, thank you very much for sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you um, for ensuring that we have, you know, um, something to take home with us, especially to the trainers that are in here today and those who are joining us um, virtually. So I would like to thank you, Prof, that you even found time to come and spend the afternoon with us. Uh, you indicated that you have a very hectic schedule. Do you have a moment for us to take one or two questions? Okay. Can I check from the floor if there are any questions? Okay, I don't see any hands from the floor. Um, virtually, do we have any hands? Are we okay? Two hands, please. Uh, let's take the two hands. You, you may unmute the, pe the, the people. Okay, um, you may go ahead. I cannot see the names. Okay, I see MZ and Rakadi in Tabi Singh. So I will start with MZ, then Rakadi, and finally in Tabi Singh. So if you can just keep them brief so that um, Prof will be able to leave in the next five minutes as he has another engagement in Pretoria. Thank you very much, MZ. Please go ahead. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Izzy. Um, thank you very much, Prof, for that very powerful um, rendition you just given us here. As, as you are speaking, um, I, I, I kept wondering, what is it that we're doing here? Because we're using, we're using the terminology of, of pedagogy. And I was actually excited to hear now that actually at some point, you did make a, a distinction between pedagogy and, and andragogy. I, for me, for me that, 
difference is fundamental in the sense that what we're doing here is we engage with, with people in the adult space. Uh, we engage with people and therefore we need to be able to, to, to be learner-centered. If we were to be learner-centered in, in pedagogy, in pedagogy, we, 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 we understand that learners expect us to teach them. But in anthropology, we acknowledge that we're dealing with people who come here with experiences and ours is to make is to ensure that we use their experiences to further their learning. Do you see this as a, as a big difference or not? For me, it is in the sense that what we do in class will um we 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 will we, we our our view of whether we're doing pedagogy or not, or, not uh, or pedagogy will determine our behavior in class. Just now, the example that the prof made of, of, of participants who said this this facilitator is, is, is reading slides to us and is not engaging us. That would be, that for me would be a, a person who is, who is engaging in, in pedagogy. And if you're engaging in pedagogy, you would actually do the opposite. That, that, is, that, that is really the point that I wanted to raise. And, and, and I think that discourse is something that we need to think about as the energy. Okay. Thank you, Mzi, for that question. I'm going to take the second question. Rakhadi, you had your hand up and- Yes. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, colleagues. Um, and good afternoon to our speakers. Um, my question is, is, is one, I'm, I'm just trying to pull together everything that has been shared from yesterday and, and try and see whether we are on the right path or not. Because when we talk about um, decolonizing the curriculum, and we, we tend to separate uh, colonialism in terms of the Western and in the African ways. What, what really caught my attention was, I'm not sure whether it was intentional or not, um, that at the moment we're talking about COVID, but if you look at all the messaging, it, it's more on the Western way of curing or even dealing with, with COVID-19 and then ignoring the African ways of maintaining our health as African people. And we are not bringing it forth in government to say, this is how Africans used to do it. And it tends to be uh, pushed on the side and then we're pushing the Western way of dealing with, with health issues. So I just wanna hear from the professor, if, if we talk, we're talking decolonizing the curriculum, where do we start? Do we start with where we are? How do we deal with issues of Western as well as African? Thank you. Thank you very much, Rakadi. There was one last hand before I give over to Prof. Um, good morning. Thanks very much, um, uh, MC. My question to the professor, thank you. Good morning again, uh, professor. Um, I acknowledge um, the, the, the insight you have shared with us. My two co um, concern or, or comments is first, I'm speaking here not having a figurative, but the big the supply of, of training in the public sector. If we're talking about professionalizing public service, the, the supply of, of how we bring in training in public service is it's quite a, a challenge. When one looks at when I say supply, I'm talking from the purchase of in, in different government institutions, whether all three spheres. It, it, it actually is questionable and it actually does not align to the, you know, the objectives or the vision or the imaginary vision of the framework. That is also, it, it's a call of concern and knowing that, uh, as I said, I don't have the, but government is the biggest buyer of training and, and, and training even of, of the NQF, it's still not it's still not the appropriate one. It, it actually undo every effort of, of professionalizing. That's my first question. And I think we need to look into, into this thing, um, you know, to empower your facilitation. You, you facilitate what you are instructed. You cannot facilitate what you have not been instructed to do. My last question in, in context of the uh, the fourth industrial um, revolution that we are faced with, um, in 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 also in in relation to the subject that you have given insight to, I do not see in terms of the institutional framework. I do not see in this past two days that we have dealt with. Obviously, 
Let me say, let me only uh, uh, focus on your presentation of uh, the insight you have given. I miss who is or who is to do quality assurance? Quality assurance in sense of, I'm not talking about that, is that who is to ensure that there's a quality insurance, not as police, are you doing the right thing? I think that's not the way we should. This, this introduction of the COVID-19 is teaching us something. There must be continuous improvement in terms of what we are doing. We do also for, you know, not only for this generation, but generations to come. So even and as Seems like we have lost Ntabi Singh. Good afternoon, Ntabi Singh. Thank you very much for your inputs. Um, I see there is a last hand. I'm going to take this last hand and give over to Prof to um, respond, Dr. Sal. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Izzy. And it's so nice to see you facilitating there, knowing that you are a certified lead facilitator. And I could see all of the art of facilitation, uh, the way you integrated and interconnected everything that was happening. And of course, people always look at you as the finance expert. And here we could see the teaching and learning expertise coming out as well, which was really great. I just want to get to the professor's um, presentation and uh, just point out that um, uh, initially when I got to SAMD and for many years after that, six years, we talked about customer care and clients, which I felt did not fit with the social justice approach, which we uh, had brought into the curriculum around 2012. We then changed our course and we developed a course called citizen-centered service delivery because that was the focus away from this notion of customers. And I have often pointed out uh, the, that, you know, the neoliberal intents of our legislation and policies. And I even spoke about that yesterday when I presented on the art of facilitation and how our policies are embedded with new management theory, but that we need to take a um, decolonial lens when we uh, look at our curriculum and training, which is what we have done. But right now in 20 or since about two years ago, 2019, we have pushing, been pushing rather the terminology of um, people in South Africa or communities, our communities, because citizen-centered is also discriminatory in that it excludes people that are not citizens of the country but are living here. And you know that a lot of uh, people in our communities are undocumented uh, uh, people. And so then the, it's not right to exclude them if we're looking at a point of view that it comes from humanism or a decolonial point of view. So we have already moved on from citizen centered now in, you will see in some of our new courses um, from 2019, when we did the community development courses, that we are now um, have moved away from that focus on even on citizen centered. So I just wanted to bring that up. And uh, the last speaker was asking about how do you decolonize? You have to use your decolonial lens. It's got to be, it's got to be integrated with your sense of being. So it's just not knowing it's the being. Remember, we talked about the being as a facilitator. And you have to apply that to everything. So even today, as Surya was talking to you about the media and the images that you use, you have to also think about it in a decolonial context. You have to think about who, whose context and who has access to what in terms of your participants. You have to look at the pictures. You have to use your own background and then self-reflect and decolonize what you, know, what you are bringing to it as a trainer or facilitator. So I just wanted to add those other little issues. And uh, uh, Tami Singh, was it? Or uh, yeah, Tami Singh talked about health. It, we have to, in this country, embark on uh, epistemological justice, achieving epistemological justice. And so that's another big word 
<laughs> Dr. Izzy, and, uh, and, and that is about our knowledge, knowing that knowledge is not just Western knowledge. We have to recognize the multiplicity of knowledges that exist and, and that even local knowledges are very important. And just because people don't speak English or they haven't been to school, it doesn't mean they don't have knowledge. And I'm talking here about the rural people in this country, and I've worked closely with them, and I know uh, you get some of the most erudite uh, uh, knowledge in those areas and for solving our local problems. So I just wanted to add those uh, perspectives as well. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sal, for the inputs. And thank you to the colleagues who have posed a few questions to Prof. I think at this moment, I will give over to you, Prof, um, for you to respond to the three questions. Thank you. Um, let me start with uh, Dr. Sa. Uh, thank, thank you so much because I could see that you also answers, you know, largely most of the questions that were posed to me, particularly those that relate to um, how do we decolonize knowledge. Um, obviously, we throw big words, but those big words indeed do have meaning. Um, 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 one question that came with Sal answer, answered it was, where do we start? The, 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 the answer is simple. We need to start by acknowledging the worth of our contribution to our reality, because in many instances, we tend to embrace what comes from elsewhere as if it is a panacea to our own immediate challenges. And we, we suppressed what really originate from us, which in many instances often tend to be uh, what we should use to really deal with our immediate uh, uh, what you call uh, situation. So where do we start? Let's, uh, let's start by acknowledging our wealth. Let's start by acknowledging the fact that what we know matters. And therefore we should always try to use what we know for the purpose of uh, addressing whatever challenge that we might actually be confronted with in our immediate situation. I often used to give this simple example that when a person visits your house, you might not really have anything, but the first thing that you are going to ask that person is whether can you offer that person water. Water is a sign of welcome. And this is, this is Ubuntu, you know, is who we are, right? But the situation tends to change somewhat when we receive a visitor in our office. What can I do for you? No, it shouldn't really be that way, you know. Um, welcome that person in the same way that you, you will welcome him or her as she or he come to your house. You know, so th that is what we are talking about. There is so much knowledge within ourselves, but we tend to suppress that knowledge when we are in certain context. And 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 I think I think where do we start? We need to start from 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 those um, a simple basic, and that is what the coloniality is all about. The question of asserting truly who we are, right? Um, I'm glad, Dr. Sal, that uh, uh, there is movement in terms of um, uh, moving towards a citizen-centered uh, um, a program. Um, um, I must say that um, I am happy that uh, there is movement in that regard. And, and I want us to perhaps also use the African philosophy of humanism to define a citizen. Right? Because if we use the African philosophy of humanism as a context to define a citizen, we will look at each and every person as a human being. 
not as a, a, a resident of a particular country, as a human being. And this is Ubuntu, right? So, so if we define citizenship in terms of the colonial templates, inevitably, we are going to define citizens largely on the basis of their nationality or on the basis of their country of origin. But if we are to define a citizen in the context of Ubuntu, we are just simply going to look at that particular person as a human being. So that is, that is um, 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 another important point that perhaps we could actually reflect on. Uh, the question of how do we decolonize uh, the curriculum, I did talk about it. Uh, but let me tell you also that even at institution of higher learning, the question of decolonizing a curriculum is still a challenge. But um, it is a challenge that we must always say to ourselves that we are, we are at some point going to overcome. Um, there was um, the first, I think, Mzi, uh, Mzi largely, he was not necessarily asking a question, but it was a comment. And in many ways, I do agree with what he was actually saying. Um, and I think also he underscores some of the things that you might have actually uh, talked about in terms of your art of facilitation. You need to also um, 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 acknowledge the fact that the people that we interact with do have so much that they know, and therefore your style of engaging them um, uh, should not likely be um, on the on the basis of um, what 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 we call a fundamental uh, pedagogic approach. In other words, um, 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 uh, moving from the premise that they might not actually know as much as you, you do, right? We are dealing with adults, they know so much, and therefore we need to master the art of making sure that we bring to bear what they know with the purpose of assisting each other to come up with solutions that we need for the purpose of solving um, uh, various challenges of service delivery. There was also a question about, rather a concern, uh, about supply of, of training um, to, to build state capacity. A training intervention must be purposeful. We should not just simply train for the purpose of ticking a box. It shouldn't be that way. We, we need to be purposeful in our approach and also um, um, uh, going back to the issue that I talked about earlier, um, um, uh, training within the context of professionalizing the public service, um, 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 we, we, we must always make sure that the training package that we put out there is of the relevant quality. And the quality of training is a function of many things, which will obviously include the quality of the trainer himself or herself, which will obviously also include your, your, the extent to which a person is knowledgeable around assessment methods, you know, because for us to establish whether a particular training intervention has succeeded, we need to ascertain that through a particular um, assessment approach that we might use. Uh, the question of quality assurance, I fully concur with you, is critically important, and we must consistently do it, and preferably, it must be done by a person who is not in any way involved in a particular training uh, intervention. For IR is very important, we need to use, thank you so much, for IR is very important, we need to, um, we cannot shy away from technology is here and therefore we need to explore all these um, um, uh, technologies that are actually making our ways into our lives to see how we could actually use them for the purpose of optimizing um, 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 uh, what we are doing uh, because if we are we are to look into the available technology we could actually 
do so much in terms of reaching as many people as possible uh, in terms of training using the available technology. It, it, it therefore means that also as a trainer, you must master the art of using the 4IR technology for the purpose of offering uh, whatever training. And also you must master the art of using technology for the purpose of conducting an assessment, uh, uh, so forth and so on. I, I think these are some of the issues that came from, from colleagues. I'm not so sure if there is any of the issue which I am actually leaving, but uh, largely they were more of comments. And uh, yeah, let me say, uh, I thank you for all your questions and comments. Thank you very much, Prof. Um, we really appreciate the knowledge that you have shared with us and the almost an hour that you have been here with us. We really appreciate that. If I may ask you um, to receive a token of appreciation from the NSG, perhaps I should come up the stage, sorry. You see how passionate Prof is about the subject matter. He's also I'm perspiring I'm <laughs> because of the ideas that are coming into his head. Yes. Prof, thank you very much on behalf of the National School of Government. We appreciate the time that you have spent with us. Thank you. thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Colleagues, can we give Prof a big round of applause? Because I know he needs to leave us as he has another engagement. At this hour, may I ask um, Dr. Maja, can we give him another mic, please? Or are you going to speak from the podium? Okay. Yes. So, Dr. Maja, over to you. We are in your capable hands. Thank you very much. Which mic are you using? That one? Okay. It's not there. That's why I'm asking if we can just give him another mic, please. Then he doesn't have to stand at the podium. See, the colleagues are tired already. Can I give you the sanitizer? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Yes. Colleagues are very tired. Hi, Bo. Oh, here's another mic for you. No, it's fine. We'll, we'll work okay. here. Thank you very much, colleagues. I leave you in the hands of Dr. Maja, then I will come back to close off. Okay. Uh, colleagues, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director. Um, so because yesterday people got tired of my voice, uh, I'm really going to be strict and not talk for more than 10 minutes so that uh, we, can, we can finish a bit early. Um, so they put me on the program to do vote of thanks and to close this. So <clears throat> the thing is that, um, as I indicated yesterday, this, this is a very uh, complex conversation that we will not finish in two days. So we were just really scratching the surface over the last two days. Maybe let me start with a few confessions as Prof. Masarumule is leaving. Uh, I'm not very good with big concepts. So I can't do big words. So I'm not going to do big words. I struggle with big words. That's the first confession. The second one is that, um, and I don't know how to put this with correct English, but I, I, I cringe whenever I hear uh, prefixes such as D, such as post, such as anti. You know, those prefixes, they make me cringe. And the reason they make me cringe is because once I hear a prefix like that, my brain goes into the negative. 
it automatically goes into the negative. So we're using these concepts because maybe we don't have better concepts, right? But I, I, I sometimes struggle to know what's the difference between colonialism and decolonialism. Because once you say to me, decolonial, I, I, I get stuck on colonial. In fact, you know, the very concept colonial is not, is not an African concept, by the way, because Africa never colonized anyone. So we don't know where that concept comes from. Yes, now we are saying D, just like apartheid, you know, we didn't, you know, black people did not create apartheid. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, at some point, we are going to have to create new concepts to define that which we seek to achieve. And in creating those new concepts, they would, they would have to be clean new concepts that are not a D or an anti or a post. One of the important things I think we must worry about, I worry about this myself a lot, is identity. You know, I, I, don't, I mean, I'm a South African. I was born in South Africa. I grew up in, I grew up in Soweto, you know, and I grew up Hamaj at the same time. So I'm as South African as they come. But I sometimes wonder, who, who am I? Like, I mean, as a South African, what defines me? What defines being South African? And I think to some extent, until we resolve that issue, it's an identity issue that is facing all of us in this country. Until we resolve that identity issue, we are going to have difficulties with uh, new public management, post public management, and all these things that we put in place and then we, we undo. I mean, the point Prof. Masarumula was making just now about Batupili principles, which are really deeply rooted to a large extent in who we seek to be, but being located in the new public management theory of a customer. So it's those contradictions that emerge because we, we struggle to define who we are. Now, over the last two days, we are introducing these things to you. Maybe we're not introducing them, but we are sharing these things with you because they go to the core of what is it that we need to put in place, all of us, as public service trainers to professionalize the public sector. What is it that we need to put in place as practitioners in this field tasked with professionalizing the public sector? Some of these things, Prof. Masarumule just now hinted at them. Uh, Dr. Malaji and Ms. Arendt and Dr. Mutayan yesterday and Dr. Deval and Ms. Field were trying, you know, when they say you eat an elephant bit by bit, we're trying to skin this thing from different angles uh, without going deep into the bone. So, so yeah, Sel, uh, Dr. Muthan had no choice but to say, hey, let's talk about decoloniality, you know, because there isn't, I mean, I don't know any other, I mean, how, does, how is she going to explain this thing of doing away with colonialism? So I don't know anyone who, who, who's come up with a concept uh, other than colonialism and decoloniality. And by the way, part of the problem, and this is something we have to resolve as practitioners, which comes back to the point that Prof. Masarumlo was talking about, uh, with, with, with what we need to put in place as practitioners to professionalize ourselves, is that 
we have the opportunity ourselves to come up with these concepts. If we invest in our trade as practitioners in the field and we go back to do our masters, to do our honors, to do our doctorates, we need these concepts. Somebody needs to help us come up with these concepts. So, 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 so yesterday, Dr. Mutayan was saying, okay, since I don't have better concepts, we need to talk about how we can decolonialize and how we can uh, bring to the fourth Ubuntu, um, you know, Batupili, social justice. And we spend a lot of time engaging around all those aspects. And then in the afternoon, we said, okay, but this is 2021, COVID-19, now Omicron, uh, what does the digital space mean? Uh, and we, we, we engaged around that. And, and of course, you know, Dr. Tival was quite uh, critical in assisting us to remember that even in the space of digital, we have to worry about human beings, the same human beings that Prof. Masarubula was just talking about now. She said, so how do you create a safe environment online? That is about human beings, it's not about machines. So we've been having conversations facilitated by uh, Ms. Arens around how do we then engage, how do we bring energy into the room as facilitators, uh, the issue of creating an environment, how do we create an environment that is much more welcoming, that is much more developmental. And then we did a task which links again back to the issue that Dr. Muthan was raising yesterday around some of the philosophies that we're playing around with at the National School of Government. Uh, you know, be, do, apply. We just did that exercise. Now, all of this, as I said yesterday, requires us first to be who we are supposed to be. You can't be anything else but yourself first and foremost. And, and therefore the first investment is in ourselves. The conversation we were having yesterday around how, how do you acknowledge and recognize others when you are unable to acknowledge and recognize yourself? So we have to first acknowledge and recognize ourselves and be able to say, I am good at this. Of course, we must be good at that, as I said yesterday. So, so, so how are we going to say I'm good at this? So that then I can say, since I'm good at this, who else is good at that? Oh, Dr. Malaji is good at that. Only by starting with self, am I more likely to transition and see Dr. Malaj? You see, there's a big difference between looking and seeing. You can look, but not see. It is only when you start to see that you are transitioning from that phase of looking. You know, have you seen drivers, how they drive cars these days? They're not seeing anything, they're just looking. So if the car in front, I've seen cars, uh, I had an incident a few weeks ago at a robot. Uh, the robot had, was red and there were about four lanes of us in one direction. We were waiting for the robot to be green. This one guy decided, the one in front, that he's not gonna wait for the robot to be green. He's, he's going. And we all followed him because we were not seeing, but we were just looking. In fact, I realized halfway into crossing the street, no, man, the robot is still red. It hasn't changed. But we all assume that because it's moving, it must have, been, it must have changed. So the, 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 there, are, there are a number of things that we are going to take forward as we engage with you more and more. One of the most important things that we are going to take forward is this whole trigger that we are just getting from uh, Professor Maserumule about the prescripts. So he was asking, what should be the prescripts of being 
a professional public sector trainer. What are the levels? What should be the levels? What should define the levels? What should be our continuous professional development points? What must we keep on coming back for? What must we keep on refreshing? What kinds of expertise must we begin to master, whether it be statecraft, mastering statecraft, mastering the craft of facilitation, teaching expertise, subject matter expertise. These are the things we are going to have to worry about as we go ahead in trying to professionalize ourselves because you can't be a master of all. We will have to find a way of building these elements into our engagements going forward as we try to professionalize. So in closing, I would just like to say, we are going to be working not only with yourselves, but also with a number of institutions that we are partnering with at the National School of Government to professionalize all of us. There are things we can do ourselves as a national school. There are things that we will need to partner with others who've done these things ahead of us. We have currently, for instance, partnerships with about 10 higher education institutions in South Africa. So we'll have to engage them to see what is it that we can uh, borrow from them in professionalizing ourselves. Uh, so I'd really encourage you to remain quite close to us. Look out as we call on you to join us in some of these interventions around how we professionalize this sector so that we can, we can be able to move forward. Lastly, be that as it may, in 2021, it is almost impossible to talk in binary. Binaries are not going to help us. So we don't like colonialism. We don't like being controlled by remote but we are in one global world. So we are seeing what are other countries doing and what is it from that which they are doing can we learn from? So Prof. Master Romulo was talking about a merit-based system. China is one of the leading, the leading countries in the world that has mastered the art of what they call meritocracy. They've been doing it for 100 years. They've been doing this meritocracy for 100 years. It is not going to help us to say we will invent our own from scratch. We have to look at what they've done, what lessons have emerged from what they've done, what worked well, what did not work well, and then say, what do we want to do here for us? And what can we use from what they've done to assist us deal with this concept of a merit-based system? Same thing with uh, UCL in the UK. We are engaging with them. We have a partnership with them. In Asia, we have a um, partnership with uh, South Korea. We also have a partnership in the US with the Arizona State University, Thunderbird. And we are trying to see how we can learn from all of this. So keep investing in yourselves, not just for yourselves, but for the benefit of the public sector as a whole. Our message is very clear from the National School. We will not be able to do this alone and on our own. We are going to need you and we will do our utmost from our side to invest and support you in building your craft. Please do the same on your side so that we meet each other halfway. So we hope to see you again next year. All the best. Thank you, Program Director.
Um, I'm out of battery. Okay, thank you. Colleagues, a very big round of applause for Dr. Maja. Thank you, Doc, for closing the program for us. It has been a wonderful two days. I want to thank each and every one of you who has been here with us up until right at the end of the day, and to thank the colleagues as well who were joining us virtually. Just one last announcement from my side. I have been asked to share the name of the book that uh, Professor Masarumula spoke about. It is The New Public Service, Serving Rather Than Steering. It is by Robert Dan Hart. The New Public Service, Serving Rather Than Steering by Robert Dan Hart. That is the book that Prof spoke about. From my side, I would like to thank the organizers the team, uh, dear host team that has organized this event for us. Marty, each and every one of you, I cannot call you all by name, but you know yourselves. Thank you for making sure that the event is a success. And thank you to the communications team. A big thank you to EU for ensuring that we have such a wonderful um, occasion. And, and thank you to the senior management of the NSG. Please, uh, Dr. Maja, pass our gratitude to the principal and the rest of his team. From me, I would like to sign out with the following quote. It says, life is not about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. So keep on getting knowledge, keep on growing, so you can become a better version of yourself. Signing out is Imangaliso Svanda Malaji. Thank you very much, colleagues. Go well, drive safely. And to those at home, thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Peace.